So again, thank you to everyone for being here with us today. It is a pleasure. I, with these words, open the launch event of the Global Soil, uh, the International Network of Soil Pollution of the Global Soil Partnership of FAO. Uh, without further ado, I would like to start with the opening of the meeting. Unfortunately, I don't see yet our director, Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee Fen Lee. Maybe he's having some issues to connect to the event. Okay, but I see we have our deputy director, Sasha Koshima, that has joined us. So maybe Sasha, you can take the floor and give some words for the opening remarks of this international network of soil pollution on behalf of LIFENG. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen and distinguished guests. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here and to welcome you uh, to the launch of the International Network on Soil Pollution. This is a very important aspect uh, of our work globally uh, in FAO um, as One Health, which is a cross-cutting subject matter across the board, uh, across all the departments and divisions. Um, so this is a very um, exciting time for us to have uh, a network uh, to, you know, of practitioners to look into the soil pollution, which is affecting so many countries and so many areas and regions um, from, uh, from various uh, farm, on farm management issues to some of the diffuse pollution issues. Uh, so uh, I look forward to having uh, all of you uh, in, in, in providing the framework and also the guidelines um, to, uh, to FAO in moving this particular network forward. Um, without much ado, I'd like to um, hand it back to the moderator um, and to continue with today's program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sasha, for your nice uh, words for the opening. And now I would like to welcome our next uh, a speaker, the Director of the Environment, Climate Change and Health Division of the World Health Organization, Dr. Maria Neira. Dr. Maria Neira. <clears throat> Muchas gracias, us. Natalia. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Dear colleagues from FAO, thank you very much for organizing it and for this uh, kind invitation. And uh, before starting, uh, let me uh, wish you all uh, uh, a very happy Earth Day. Actually, I don't know whether we can say happy Earth Day or just to put in a question, because I'm not sure we are treating the Earth the way she or he deserve. Um, I don't accept the fact that as human beings and because of our human activities, our legacy as a society is pollution soil pollution, air pollution, water pollution. This is totally unacceptable. I'm sure that you will agree with me that we change, we need to change this legacy. And starting with uh, the launch of this international network on soil pollution, I think it's a very good initiative in this sense. I refuse as a, as a human being, as a citizen, as a mother, to leave behind us as a legacy, a total pollution of the air we breathe, the food we eat, the water we drink. This is absolutely unacceptable. And let's hope that today at your meeting coinciding with the Earth Day, we will put already some uh, important uh, pillar to, to start to move on something different. Colleagues, my comment as the, the representative of the World Health Organization is only one. Soil pollution is so much linked or soil is very much linked to human health. Normally, we always talk about the negative impact that uh, polluted soil will have on human health because of the uh, overuse of pesticides, synthetic fertilizers, the potential contamination of the uh, fresh water. But let me be positive today. Let me concentrate on the positive aspects. If we have a healthy soil, 
And this is so much linked to our, uh, the potential for a healthy nutrition, for food security. Imagine that uh, that will represent a very important contribution to uh, human health. Therefore, my message is that put health as well on very strongly on your consideration for, for promoting an international network for, to avoid soil pollution. Let's join forces, all of us to say, well, pollution is bad, it's bad for the economy, it's bad for the society, it's bad for, for, for human health. And I'm sure that all together we will pass this message and hopefully giving some hope as well for, for, for the, the generations we are supposed to protect, for the planet we are supposed to protect and for, for all of us ensuring human health in a different way. A um, few days ago, it was uh, the World Health Day, and we dedicated the, the, the theme was Our Planet, Our Health, so it cannot be more relevant to what you are discussing here today. So in the name of the health community, thank you for that, and please be reassured that we will use as much as possible the health argument to support this. Thank you very much, Natalia. Over to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Neida. Really appreciated your important remarks, and to know that we have the support of the World Health Organization as well. Now, I would like also to thank the Director of the Ecosystem Division of the United Nations Environment Program, Ms. Garner, who wasn't able to attend due to prior commitments, but has sent us her support for this initiative. And as all of you know, UNEP is also a key partner for this network. So thank you also to UNEP for supporting this initiative. And finally, for the, for the final remark, for the opening remarks, sorry, I want to give the floor to Mr. Joaquim Dougenio from the DG Environment of the European Commission, who will tell us more about the European Zero Pollution Action Plan. So Mr. Joaquim, now you have the floor. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, hello, everybody. Good to see you all. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, I'm delighted to be with you and I'm even more delighted that I'm able to speak uh, on behalf of the European Commission and doing so after Maria Neira because it makes my life much easier because I can only fully subscribe and support uh, what she has said uh, in general about pollution and, and more specifically about the role that your network can play and uh, that the link uh, to health, uh, health uh, that how important it is. Uh, we are really thrilled to see that FAO with many partners, uh, you've mentioned UNEP, I think you have many, many people, other people who are joining this network and, and have made this possible today, uh, that this is happening because it basically shows that we are not alone in, in the European Union about thinking about pollution in such a uh, systemic and and an and, and, and important way uh, that pollution has to be tackled. I think we have been working on this also on soil pollution for many, many years, but we really realize now that the time has come that we have to, to ch uh, step change our, our actions and that we really have to make a difference. And, and that is why uh, your initiative and your uh, work will be absolutely essential and will be contributing to the ambition that we have set out under the European Green Deal and in particular under the European uh, Action Plan for Zero Pollution for Air, Water and Soil. Now, let me start back um, from when the Green Deal was announced by um, my president, uh, Mrs. von der Leyen, and she highlighted the importance that she wanted that our health, the health of our citizens and biodiversity are protected from pollution. And in doing so to set out a zero pollution ambition, which is a generational uh, goal. And it is a, a global goal as well as a local goal. I think there is a global dimension of pollution and there's a local dimension of pollution. And she really set out this, this view and it, we were delighted also to, to, from the outset, to make sure that we're working on pollution on air water and soil together. And as you may know, in the EU, soil has, has somehow uh, been a, a not has had that much prominence uh, that uh, our air and, and water policy have received. So we were delighted to see that we really now are trying to tackle this in an integrated way across the whole uh, environmental cycle. And that we are uh, that we are doing so uh, with a long-term vision, which is the second point that I wanted to point out. In the action plan that we've published nearly a year ago, 
And in analogy to what we have set out in terms of uh, climate uh, neutrality for 2050, we developed the vision, a vision of starting point, something to aspire to for 2050, zero pollution vision. And I just want to read that out to you. This vision says air, water, and soil pollution is reduced to levels no longer considered harmful to health and natural ecosystems, and that respect the boundaries of our planet can cope with, thus creating a toxic free environment. This is a very bold and ambitious vision. And I'm not saying this is going to be easy. I'm not saying we have all the answers yet. But if we don't set ourselves long term ambitious goals, we will never be able to tackle these issues in the way they need to be addressed. And the, the good thing about the action plan that we set out with uh, in, the, in the context of the Green Deal is that we don't do that in isolation. We do that together by joining forces and building on the actions and the work that we're doing to achieve climate neutrality. The actions we're taking to reduce biodiversity loss and, and which has set out in the biodiversity strategy, the drive towards a circular economy, the one health approach set out by the WHO to have a healthy, healthy lives for our citizens and children. So I think we're really at the, at the game changer in terms of policy making, which also requires everybody to join in. This is not a, an action that the European Commission or the EU can take on its own. It requires the brightest minds and hearts around the world to join that ambition, to join that uh, spirit and uh, that vision and make a difference. And your network is exactly doing that. And that's why I'm so delighted uh, to be part of this, uh, of this launching event. I, I wish you all the success. And I think we all now, in addition to being Earth, we all now are subject to a situation where our hearts and minds are with people in Ukraine, where things are happening we could not, not have even foreseen. And this is day to day terrible. But you also will know from your experience that the level of pollution that is being created through this war will also be with us for many, many years and people will be affected even long time when this war is hopefully soon over. Uh, and, and this is something where soil pollution will come in, where we really need to do this for everybody on the planet. And, and that's why your efforts and your uh, initiative is so much welcome from our side. So I will stop here. Uh, there, I see there are colleagues from, from our side also participating further to give you more details on what we have presented and what we are now working on in more detail in relation to soil. But I just wanted to say a few words of welcome and a few words of appreciation and encouragement to, to be as ambitious as possible. And we are there to, uh, to really work together closely in, in, in your endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Delgenian. It has been a very enlightening presentation. Indeed, I hope this network will really contribute, at least from the soil part, to achieve this global goal of zero pollution, because it's, it's something that the European Commission has uh, proposed for its own territory, but it goes further because pollution is a problem that affects all of us. It doesn't know any border. It doesn't respect any border. And indeed, everything that happens in one place in the world will affect the health of humans and the environment of all uh, countries and continents. So thank you so much for your support. I really second your words and I really hope that this network will contribute to this global goal. Well, now I would like to ask all of the participants to join me a round of an applause for all our outstanding speakers that has uh, opened this launch event of the International Network of Soil Pollution. Now we will start with the technical session. So I, I can excuse some of you, if you of the opening uh, speakers, if you have other commitments, we will start with the technical part. Before that, I want to give some instructions for the participants. As uh, you heard at the beginning, we. Uh, have more than 2,000 registered participants. Uh, initially, we thought about this event as a meeting, interactive meeting with where all the participants can raise their hands, can speak loud, and can share their experiences, their ideas, and their vision for this network. Unfortunately, because of the limitations of the virtual reality, we can now not have this as a, as a meeting, but as a webinar. But still, you have the possibility to raise your hand. So when we start the discussion, please feel free to raise your hand 
and uh, we will give you the floor to speak out, or you can also put your questions in the Q&A chat and we will address them. Uh, thank you so much. So without further ado, I will now give the floor to Mr. Ronald Vargas, who is the uh, Secretariat of the Global Soil Partnership, the Secretary, sorry, of the Global Soil Partnership. He will introduce a bit the scene of what the international uh, community, especially the Food and Agriculture Organization, has done in the last year to start working on soil pollution and to raise this topic and put it into the political global agenda. So, Ronald, welcome. And now the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Natalia, and to all the speakers, uh, the participants, and of course, the our colleagues who have already opened this uh, important uh, event today, our real uh, gratitude for being there. Uh, well, let me share my screen in order to share some few slides with you uh, about this important topic. So first of all, yes, today is our uh, the air day and that is why we are organizing the launch of this network today to uh, adhere to the celebration. Yes, and I agree with our colleague from WHO, of course. Do we really need to celebrate? Yeah, well, if we will be there and the different resources, maybe we will be complaining more than celebrating, but at least we want to take the launch of this event in order to, co to commit ourselves towards fighting soil pollution. And I think that is why we are here today. There are many problems that our uh, world is facing now, but one that really concern, uh, concern us a lot, especially at the Global Soil Partnership is pollution. Why? Because pollution, as you, I'm, and I'm sure all of you who are experts know the real uh, issues with pollution in comparison to many other degradation types in our soils, the challenge is there. And you know, the world has agreed to achieve sustainable development by 2030, but if we don't address all these challenges, it will be very difficult. And soils have a role to play because they do a lot for us when providing ecosystem services. But there is a strong evidence that we will not achieve the SDGs or the development, or we will not talk about healthy food if we don't address soil pollution, because as you can see here, soil pollution has a lot of effects, unfortunately negative ones, in the provision of all of these ecosystems, but also as the interface between air and water, right? People usually talk a lot about air pollution, water pollution, but they then forget that the beginning of all this is soils. And unfortunately, it doesn't stay just in air and soil and water. It goes also into our bodies and through food because it is part of the food chain. And that is where a lot of concern comes because sometimes human beings are not really valuing the resources, et cetera, and they are more interested on how they look like or how, or how they are in terms of health. But there is a lot of studies already showing us that unfortunately contaminants are coming to our bodies through different drivers. And one of the main drivers, of course, is food, water, and air. Therefore, we really need to be concerned about it. And we are very concerned in FAO about this issue because when talking about food security, we have to ensure that food is produced, that food is accessible to people. But then we talk a lot about food safety. How can we talk about food safety if we don't look at where our food is produced, how our air and our water are in terms of contaminants? We really need to be sure that they are free of these contaminants. And we started working on this topic when we launched the uh, status of global state, world status of soil resources 
report, and this was produced by our panel of experts, and they identified 10 threats. One of them was soil pollution as one of the major threats. But of course, if you analyze the threats, many of them have been addressed like soil erosion by many people and continues to be number one. But to me personally, the one that concerns me more is soil pollution because we call soil pollution a hidden reality. Why? Soil is always hidden, but pollution more than hidden because many people are aware that exists, but very few are doing something to deal with it. Why? Because the implications soil pollution has economically, you know, it can affect many sectors and also it can create a lot of uh, panic among the population if they understand what is the extent of it. So really it's a, a, a threat that we need to address it now. Otherwise we will have issues that we are already having, but it, they can increase. And because of this, we have been trying to work on this topic. And I'm glad that there are many initiatives taking place around the world, but I believe that we need more and we need more support, more investment in order to really tackle this issue. There is a lot of information coming up, but still we need more actions because otherwise the SD, this sustainable development goals will not be fully realized if we don't tackle the issue of soil health. And particularly, we really need to address the issue, the issue of one health because currently we talk about environmental health, animal and human health, but we believe that soil health is fundamental in order to really have a complete approach. Otherwise, we will be missing a big part of the puzzle. And recently, there is more recognition of soil pollution as an issue. And we have been working very hard on this together with other UN organizations. So the United Nations Environmental Assembly already addressed the issue of soil pollution. And linked to that, we have organized the Global Symposium on Soil Pollution in 2018. And following that, we have worked together with all of you scientists in providing a global assessment on soil pollution. Of course, data and information are missing. And we know there is a huge gap, but still we really need to see how we can move, could move forward with this. And that's why we have a global, the outcome document on soil pollution that was marking the way forward. And we are focusing on four key actions, trying to fill the knowledge gaps because there is a lot of data and information missing in terms of where, which type of pollution is where, what are the, the trends, etc. We miss also legal frameworks that can address this issue. We need to work hard on raising awareness of general public and decision makers and advocate for action because that is fundamental. And we really need to join forces and advocate for international cooperation. We are really glad that the European Union has a very strong program to, and commitment to fight pollution. And we really hope that that commitment can be exported globally and all countries around the world can be committed to fight soil pollution because it is really important. And we are trying to do so through this network, of course, and we hope that we will join forces to really uh, fight not only from the science, from the academia, but all together, because this is a real threat that can affect us all. So today we will be launching this network and we really hope that you all plus other stakeholders can join us because the only thing we want to do is to prevent, try to prevent pollution, but also to deal with it in the places that is taking place now. It requires a lot of efforts, investment. It requires commitment, but I'm sure we can do it only together. So I re I'm really glad that you are here and that you will be joining in SOP. And I really want to thank you all for being here, but especially for helping us to build this network and fight pollution. Thank you very much.
Natalia. Thank you very much, Ronald, for setting the scene on what we have done over the last few years. Now we will start really with the launch of this network. And for this, I'm very pleased to give the word to my colleague, Ms. Sergius uh, Ustinov from the Global Soil Partnership Secretariat, who will be the coordinator of this network and will present us in brief the vision, mission, and goals of the network. Although later on, we will have the opportunity to discuss it more in detail. So Sergius, welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Natalia. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all participants, to all who joined us this afternoon um, in the launch of the International Network on Soil Pollution. Um, as Natalia mentioned, I would like to give a quick and short presentation on um, the vision, mission, goals of the INSOP. Why is it important? and uh, what we would like to achieve in it. So as was mentioned by um, speakers in the past, um, pollution is one of the biggest environmental problems globally, posing um, a big risk to the environment and human health. In 2015, uh, the GSP, Global Soil Partnership, together with ITPS, which is Intergovernmental Inter Technical Panel on Soil Pollution, identified it as the major threat to the world soil and began to collect data at national, regional, and global levels. As can be seen here from the graph in the slide, um, which was produced by the Global Assessment Soil Pollution Report very recently in 2021 by FAO, the sources uh, of soil pollution are vast and they vary and uh, range from industrial activities as diverse as energy production from industrial activities to dyeing of our clothes, mining, agriculture, transport, you name them, to everyday activities we carry at homes. In 2017, approximately 2.3 billion tons of chemicals were produced globally. And this number was doubled the amount of produced chemicals that was in the year 2000. Threat is increasing from a newly emerging contaminants like synthetic or naturally occurring chemicals that are not commonly monitored in the environment for which no regulatory guidance values are available. But not only synthetic chemicals pose a risk to the environment and human health, but also naturally occurring chemicals like heavy metals, um, other rare elements, asbestos, or even naturally radionuclides such as radon. In 2018, GRC report produced an estimate a figure of 2.8 million sites that are potentially contaminated only across the EU countries. Therefore, having this in mind, we're in urgent need to stop soil pollution and start to manage and remediate those sites that are already affected by the pollution. Having this in mind, our vision of this network is that new soil contamination should be prevented as much as possible. But when it occurs, despite preventative and other measures, the risks should be immediately addressed. Therefore, the vision of INSOP is to take a swift action and reduce soil pollution to levels that are no longer harmful to both people's health and ecosystems and any environmental compartments involved. The mission of the network will consist of the following four points. We need to support and facilitate joint efforts towards reducing the risks of soil pollution. We need to strengthen technical capacities and legislative frameworks for the prevention of soil pollution. We need to promote the exchange of experiences and techniques and technologies, best available techniques for sustainable management and remediation of polluted soils. And finally, we need to address key knowledge gaps and improve technical capacities in order to detect, quantify, map, and monitor soil pollution, as well as to remediate. Ladies and gentlemen, the first major studies on soil pollution started back in the 70s, although today in 2022, we're still facing major gaps in this field. Therefore, in order to succeed and reduce those gaps, we need to uh, cooperate together in order to achieve the following goals. We need to increase efforts to identify, assess, map, monitor, and remediate contaminated sites so that soil pollution will no longer pose health uh, or environmental risks. Secondly, we need to provide an international forum 
for the generation and dissemination of knowledge on soil pollution. We need to promote an exchange of good practices and scientific knowledge and innovative solutions in order to manage polluted soils in a sustainable manner. And also we need to establish interdisciplinary co cooperative links between all involved parties, such as governments, academia, private sector, and society in order to stimulate the development of cleaner and more sustainable solutions and consumption options. Last but not least, we need to strengthen technical uh, capacities through coordination among existing networks. And we believe that only uniting together, we can achieve those goals and have a positive uh, outcomes because all of us here have the role to play. And therefore, we encourage all of you to contribute your knowledge, passion, skills, and experience in combating soil pollution by joining an INSOP. Thank you very much uh, for listening, and I hope you will enjoy the rest of the webinar. Natalia, thank you. Thank you so much, Serge. I think your presentation was very clear, and all the participants will have a better idea of what we want to do with this international network on soil pollution. So thank you so much. Now, well, we are not inventing any wheel. We are not the first one working on soil pollution at the international level or even regional or national level. There are many other initiatives that are working on this topic, have been working on this topic for many years, and we want to bring them all together to this table to join forces and to try to reach all the different levels of stakeholders that Ronald just mentioned before. And this is why we have invited them, uh, or some of them, unfortunately, we could not invite all the existing networks, but we have invited some of the, the ones that are working with us since 2018 more closely to give a brief presentation of what they do, what the network do, and how they can contribute and join efforts with this network to achieve our common goal of zero pollution. So now I have the pleasure to invite them all to present briefly what they do and how we can contribute and can work together. Our first speaker in this new uh, section of the day regarding soil pollution initiative is Professor Rabin Aidu from the Global Contamination Initiative. Uh, Professor Rabi, you have the world. Thank you very much, Natalia, for um, introducing me and also providing me an opportunity uh, to present an overview of um, the work uh, that my center is, is, is doing. Let me just see how I can share, share the screen. What happened here? Sorry about that. I'm just trying to see how I can share the screen. Here it is. Share. Thank you very much, um, Natalia. In the first instance, I, I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, the introductory remarks, uh, particularly um, from Maria uh, and also from, from Jochen. Um, in the first instance, that we must not leave um, legacy, legacy contamination for future generations. And as Jochen has uh, mentioned in his presentation, that pollution is, is about air, it's about soil, it's about water as well. And all of these are really um, components of what we call the critical zone. Uh, if the air is polluted, we don't see what's present in the air, we breathe contaminants. If I present, provide to you two glasses of water, with one that is contaminated, unless you have excess copper in there, you won't see the difference between the two. You might be drinking contaminated water. Equally, if I give you two bags of soil, one is contaminated and ask you to distinguish between the two, but just by looking at it, you won't be able to do that. And that's one of the reasons why having worked on contaminants for nearly 30 years now, uh, we initiated Global Contamination Initiative, which is uh, now renamed as Global Care Lines. And I'm going to take you through what, who we are. Won't go into science, but just touch on some of the things that we are doing and what we think we could do collaboratively, jointly to help minimize and also clean up the environment. And therefore, very quick overview of pollution. One slide, 
scale of the problem, some of which, which we have already had, and also from Ronaldo, uh, the impacts, um, the challenge, what Global Care Alliance is, and what we have been doing via Global Connections, and something on building capacity as well. The reason why we are here to, today, and the reason why FAO um, is moving forward and focusing so much on soil pollution is that we recognize that environmental contamination is a global problem. We all know about that. And these two images that I have here shows that long-term exposure can have devastating impact. And the top one here is the tributyl tin, apologies, oops, tribal routine exposure to the Bible with the sexologan coming out of the head. And the second picture image is arsenic, low dose, but over a long period leading to what we see there and ultimately death as well. Now, we often fail to differentiate between point or non-point sources with non-point sources often recognized and identified as diffuse pollution. Point sources are highly contaminated sites small areas, but very high concentration, not just impacting soil, it can impact groundwater as well and through erosion, riverine systems as well. In contrast, when you look at diffuse pollution, this is low doses of contamination, just like cadmium in agricultural soils, pesticide, for example, and there are areas we have ultra low doses of, uh, of mercury because of mercury mining and then volatilization of mercury and then dis being disposed somewhere else. And the way we manage these, these contaminants is very, very different from diffuse from contamination. For example, you just cannot replace soil. You cannot extract the contaminant. So you can only, what we can do is risk manage these as well. I won't go into treatment technology, but just highlighting that they're just not highly contaminated sites, but we also have, have large areas of diffuse contamination as well. Now, we heard about the scale of the problem um, greater than 100,000 is what uh, I, I thought 10 years ago. And about two decades ago, there was this publication where I estimated registered synthetic chemicals was 80,000, of which only 0.25% of chemicals was required, was, which was required for safety testing, meaning many chemicals were out there that were not tested at all. And most recent is that we have 144,000 chemicals and US Department of Health uh, noting that two, two and a half thousand chemicals are synthesized and released every year. Now, if you look at contaminated sites, this is published information, and just look at the first two columns, uh, you can see uh, there's millions of contaminated sites, and I think you can include 2.8 million in EU countries, and uh, we have uh, I had 600,000 there, but uh, the latest is probably 2.8 million. Then there is Eastern Europe as well, yet to be quantified, but there's one report from, I think it was EU, um, European Environment Agency, uh, listing two and a half thousand potentially contaminated sites. Now this does not include South America and Middle East and Africa. Now these are all where most people live, densely populated areas. And then you go out of this region, you have all the diffused contamination that we have to deal with as well. Now, this report here from WHO, that annually 7 million people die from exposure to, pol pol to pollutants. And more recently, the same number again was published. And therefore, you're breathing air with pollutants. Some people don't know, some might know, but the devastating impact of air pollution. And if you look at this here, in 2004 publication, uh, 4.9 million people die from direct exposure to pollutants. And you add that to air pollution, and this is air, water, and soil, and food crops. Add this to air pollution, about 12 million people die every year. And look at HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, traffic accidents, and malaria, not as many as the number who die from exposure to pollutants. So looking at that, you are, I'm asking this question, what is it that we need to do to minimize pollution and also to help clean up the environment. And when I look at, at what we have is that the country that are richest, they're investing the most, the y-axis is investment and the countries with GDP, they invest the most in cleanup. And when you look at the number of people helping clean up, that's the countries where you have many people trying to do that. Then when you look at developing countries, um, not enough resources there, in terms of finance, not enough resources in terms of capacity. And the key question is, 
what can we do to help build capacity and where can we get the financial resources to help these countries as well. So to remediate all contaminated sites is therefore our next great challenge as we have had today as well. So Global Care, which is contaminant initiative was launched in 2013 with a new name now, Global Care Alliance. And the vision is to minimize the exposure of humans and the Earth's biosphere to anthropogenic chemical contamination from all sources. And what can we do by helping build capacity that can help us achieve this vision that we have? The mission, therefore, is to define, quantify, and set limits to help clean up and devise new ways to curb the growing chemical assault on human health and the biosphere. Global Care is a worldwide, worldwide knowledge network. We've been working on this. We've got quite a number of people who have joined us now. It's not about just capacity building. What is new science that we can come up with? How can we build a database that brings together all the knowledge that we have in countries like US, for example, North America, the Europe. And if you bring that together, how can we then diffuse that in those countries where it's needed now? And what can we do to help them implement these as well from technology perspective, policy and training as well. So knowledge uptake of global care meetings. We've been running these meetings, forums and networking for researchers, environmental managers and regulators, providing that high level training bringing industries together as well. I'm so pleased that many industries are now recognizing UN Sustainable Development Goals, which we are promoting, working with academics, working with policymakers as well. And I want to join hands with all of us who are presenting today to see how we can take this forward and how can we collaborate. And in doing so, help FAO, help UN achieve what their vision is as well. So Global Care is well-coordinated cluster now with Global Connections. And I have got tremendous support from people in these different countries who are coming forward. Every time I try to run a training program, people put their hand up and they come forward without me spending money. They help us run these workshops. And to bring the workshops together, often I go out there and try to raise money as well. For me, getting external funds is a challenge, but I always look at our future generations. If we do not do what we need to do, um, every one of our future generations, they will be posing significant risks and humanity as well from that perspective. So global care uh, training that we have building capacity is not just about training on one aspect. And you can see from this, the whole lot of things that we are, that we are linking to training such that people in their own country can take this on board work with their government departments, work with industries to deliver um, uh, approaches and way forward where we are minimizing as well as at the same time, cleaning up the envi environment. And that must go to primary school level, which is what we are doing because Global Care and CRC Care has primary school students awards, high school students awards and university as well, where they write things about environment and we judge and then award them as well. Not a lot of money, $500 or $1,000, but it really brings them together as well. Now, nobody gives me money until I go there to them, approach them, and I myself invest as well, from, uh, particularly from, from, from competition that I have in primary school, high school is personal investment because I want to see a clean environment as well. So what have we been delivered thus far? Um, so Global Care and CRC Care and Global Center for Environmental Remediation, the University of Newcastle. We have run about more than 200 workshops, 160 PhDs from different countries, run 15 international conferences in a number of countries, three glo global congresses. So this was in Indonesia, China, India, Korea, it was really four, and Malaysian government is running one now in September this year. And of course, uh, CRC Care uh, and Global Care Alliance, we are running cleanup 2022 during 11 to 15 September. I invite you to write to me and I'll see what we can do to, to get your presentations and participation where possible. And along with that, we have trained not more than 9,000 practitioners from Australia and 30 other countries. So what I want to bring to all of you is we are there to work with you, collaborate with you, and where possible step in and provide this training as well. So with that, um, I'm just leaving you with my email address and be very happy to answer questions. And thank you very much Natalia and FIO for inviting me to be part of this forum. 
Thank you very much, Professor Naidu. Very interesting presentation. And um, thank you for setting also the scene of what we will be discussing today. Our next speaker has also a great experience over 30 years working on HCH and pesticides as part of the International HCH and Pesticides Association, as Mr. John Bichem. And now I kindly ask my colleague to share the screen on his behalf. John, the floor is yours and welcome. Thank you for participating. Yes, let me see. Uh, can we? Oh, yeah. Now, let me see. Can I start it? Let's. Uh, I think this is the last slide. Can you get me the first slide? Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, thank you very much. I hope you can guide me around here. Uh, I try to make it fast. And I just want to tell you that we developed a strategy to deal with HGH and Lindane. Now, what is HGH and Lindane? Just two words. Lindane has been produced very much after the Second World War, up to the 70s, 80s, and later in other countries up to the 2000s. For each kilo of Lindane, you produce eight to 12 tons of waste. That means we have 600,000 tons of that material produced. And that means we talk about 4.8 to 7.2 million tons of HEH waste all around the world. So there's something to do. 70% of that waste is lying in Europe. So I think this project financed by the EU is a very good start to see what the problems are in the EU. In this case, we have made an inventory of all the countries of potential sites, and we deal, dealt with six plans for, region, for owners of sites to see that they can move on. And at the same time, we made a strategy. Next slide, let me see, is it working? Yes. So a couple of things, I don't show you everything, just a couple of points. The most important thing is, what did we learn over the last decades? Because we are already since the eighties up to now 40 years, we are remediation. So how can we learn from what we did, the mistakes and the good things and see how we can bring that further? Next one, is it not working? So what we found out is actually we found 300 sites, uh, potential sites. We had originally 40. And also we could see that we have not a lot of owners anymore. There is no liability mostly. And we can also see that uh, we have enormous volumes and they're still around and they're still leaching. So we have to look at how to move forward. And we, what we see, we have so much experience, we can really use it. Next slide. Yes. So we're looking actually in this experience over the years, and I try to just give you on the next slide the most important issues which we use for the strategy. Next one. Yes. Now, what we can see actually is that whole actions of remediation, HGH or other products, is dealing on cooperation. Cooperation and communication. So governments, industry, and specific branches who produce have to work together. And the way of financing, you can see actually very easily when you take certain solutions, for example, the petrol branch. If you look at the petrol stations in the Netherlands, Denmark, and Belgium, these ones have been financed by the consumers. And what you can see is that if you put on a liter, which costs three euros, and you ask two cents to pay for the consumer, you don't even know that you paid. But the point is here that you have large volumes, millions of liters you sell and the consumers pay for it and they don't even know that they pay. So these are financial mechanisms, small fees on large amounts. You can have this for the gas penny, you can do that for pesticides, you can do that in many ways. So this is a very easy way and it's a sleeping one, it's really easy to pay. What we also have seen is there are regional developing associations which have been working on the rehabilitation of contaminated land, very intense and very successful. And specifically, Germany is a fantastic example on the success of these associations. For example, in Nordrhein-Westfalia, where you have the oldest actually German industry, huge black area in the old days, is now quite green. And they have been able, due to the regional government, to gather with the communities and the industries of all levels they have been engaged 
to also to satisfy the demand for areas which are contaminated to clean them up because they need them. So you see there, the financial stream is coming in because industry and investors need it. And this, these associations, they are set up with all the stakeholders and they are very successful. The same way you can see in the Eastern European parts in Central Europe, we can see also in Eastern Germany that the problems of liability in Central Europe is very high because all the formal governments have been producing all these pollutions and you cannot make them liable. So what you can see is actually due to the fact that the German government made exemptions for contaminated sites, this opened the way to set up strategy and also set up these groups, these associations to tackle the issues. They got start funding and the cooperation of the all parties helped in this case, for example, in Germany, you look at the bit, big side of Bitterfeld, they were first able to, to get the people, the jobs, because everybody was afraid of losing the jobs. At the same time, they were able to renovate these areas, cut pollution and invest again. So also the liability issues, the government issue here is very important for Central Europe because most of the Central European countries are missing these issues and they still have this derelicted land. Many of them, biggest part has not been tackled. So these kind of lessons are really, really good. For example, another thing is that in Holland, we have been very successful to do state remediation from the eighties up to now. That's 40 years of experience. And you see at the same time that 10 years ago, the Dutch government said, you know, all the city plans are just hampered and buried due to the fact that soil contamination and soil remediation are working because they're all waiting for these old sites to remediate. So here, the government started 10 years ago and said, look, we have to move this. So they took 22 cities, the biggest cities together, get the central government, provinces and the cities, plus all the stakeholders. And the mean stakeholder is, for example, the railways. They're in every center of the town is a big railway station with a lot of pollution. It's a stakeholder, a very important one, and the water authorities. So they get these groups together, made big teams, and these teams have been strong in communication and working together. So they were proactive of getting all the parties in. And what you see now in the Netherlands, that these kind of issues are enormously successful. Everybody is in the boat and everybody is approached. So here you get more efficiency and something are running. And these big locations of HCH, they are lying on the edge of the cities. And instead of having a big problem, a very costly problem, you create the opportunities. So there you have the city planning long-term, not over five years, 25, 30 years, long-term you move on. And there are key solutions in this way. So I think some of them are mentioned, but I think these are the approaches which you can use and everybody can duplicate, replicate, adapt them from the countries which are successful. And it's not only for AG, you can do that for everywhere. So here, next one, let me see. So what you can see now, you can place all these things at certain levels. So you can do that EU level, country level, regional level, and municipal level. And there you can also see, for example, we have uh, since four years, there are several regions, six regions in Europe, they started to set up a work, a, a network, on Lindane pollution. And these regions have very big problem with this issue. But by working together on European level with a little bit of money, they started to communicate and they were astonished how much they have in common. They start to really look at solution and they work together more and more. So here this Latner is already now planning a second step in application for a new project, Lindenet number two, because they're so enthusiastic and want to get more partners in. Probably we end up next with, with 10 partners. So in this way, and we have already said to the Lindenet group, you should establish an association, a European association to tackle this on regional level, communicate with your government and communicate with you. But you have to place this on a very focused way together with the government politicians to solve it. So here are very good ways what you can do at EU level, at country level. The Lindenet group can work actually at any level. Now, let me just show you the, 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 the next slide. We made a kind of pyramid and it's even more clear. Next one. No, let me, next one. So here you can actually see how the things work. It's the bottom of a project, it's pyramid that's more clear. You put all these different elements inside. 
What do you do at local level? The problem is at local level, you have to get the engagement, the commitment is coming from the bottom, the, the problem owner, and you have to work towards when you have done your plan and you see what investors are also there, you still lag a lot, and then you have to get a next level, at regional level. And here you see, again, you have to step by step getting more uh, agreements, specifically covenants, agreements to work together to move things forward. But everything is combination, communication, prioritization, and really work together on the problems. So, and at, at the end, when you see, yes, we still have not enough funding, then of course, you have to approach EU level, but the EU will never help any, any organization, any international organization will never help if you haven't done the work at your hometown, your home region and your home country. So also there we need again, the region should work with the country, the national government. And if they are politically opposite, they don't want to help each other, but they must. So there are a lot of things to see that this should work, but this is the way forward. So this is actually very interesting and you can apply it for every, everything. Next slide. Now, a couple of points just to, the, you can also look at it another way. In Denmark, for example, one has the region have been very disappointed that all the big projects, the mega projects, have not been treated. And this has happened for generations. And everybody goes around it. Small projects they like, but the big ones they don't want to do. So the government protested and said to the government, now it's over. And they got together and say, and we want a program where we take the responsibility now for these pollutions. Don't shift it like climate. Now we tackle it and our generation must deal with it. And I think this is a very nice strategy also to apply for all the countries in Europe. You know, don't shift the problem because now we have to deal. So there is actually a very good issue. On the bottom, you see the government of Aragon has been really clever. They, they are so deep in this problem that they were able to get all parties, opposition, everybody was involved to approve in their parliament a un, unit, united plan, a strategic plan to which would deal for 25 years. They have the commitment. And if the greens are on, the blues are on, the blacks are on, they have to do it. This is a fantastic achievement. Also an example how you can do things and have a future. Everybody can do it if they want. So I think these are very good examples. And I think, let me see the next one. I think we have, I think I should have done everything. This is one of the big fighters of the, one of the biggest side in Denmark. He died last year. He has been working 60 years to fight for this. And at least he achieved that they're gonna do it. So I think this is the last one I could show you. One more. So, so this is uh, my talk and I hope you have a bit of enjoyment. Last one here. We will organize our next forum on the 21st to the 24th of February in Zaragoza, Aragon, in Spain. And uh, we will announce it and we invite you. And the uh, government of Aragon welcomes you all in the center of, of Zaragoza, in the Caja Rural de Aragon, beautiful place. And also we will show you also the site in in uh, Aragon, in Sabanyaniku, show what they have done so far and they still have to do. I think this is an ideal opportunity for those ones who don't talk about theory and want to do, here you see what has been done and will be done. So I think this is an exa example for all the practical people who want to change something. Here you come. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dion. Really interesting presentation. And I think you have clearly stated that we need to join forces and to work from the very local to the international level. And there are some different steps that we all take, uh, we all can take at the different level. So thank you so much for bringing this example. And I think we can really learn from you and replicate this initiative for many other contaminants. So thank you for being here and for your interesting presentation. Now I would like to give the floor, I'm sorry because I'm running a little bit, but because we are many, otherwise we will not have time for everyone. So our ne next speaker, sorry, is Mr. Laura Berta Reyes from the International Union of Soil Sciences. And she will tell us a bit more about the group that they have in the USS and how we can collaborate together uh, both networks. So Laura, you have the floor, thank you. Thank you to you, Natalia. 
Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on occasion of the launch of the International Network on, uh, on Soil Pollution and on behalf of the International Union of Soil Science, I want to congratulate all of you on this day, the, the, the Day of the Earth. And celebrating the Day of the Earth, I want to express the USA support and willingness to collaborate with the International Network on Soil Pollution of FAO. Based on their fundamental knowledge of soils and their properties worldwide, soil scientists united in the International Union of Soil Sciences since 1924 have made major contributions to combat different forms of soil degradation, focusing on sustainable development as a prerequisite for peace in the world. In this regard, in August 1998, the Working Group of Soils of Urban, Industrial, Traffic and Mining Areas of the International Soil Science Society, today International Union of Soil Science, was founded during the 16th USS World Congress of Soil Science in Montpellier, France. Also, as an organization committed to the sustainability of the soil resource, in 2015, the year of the soils, the USS International Decade of Soils once again defined it as one of the two main objectives to stop all kinds of, of soil degradation. The aims of SWITMA are promote soil science in a strongly anthropogenic areas where human future, future will meet major challenges. Stimulate multidisciplinary research and teaching for a better understanding and sustainable management of SWITMAS. Increase the impact of soil science in the decision-making process for urban land management. Create a community of scientists dedicated to urban soil issues, issues and communicate to other communities. On this regard, the USS shares with FAO not only its commitment to soil resource sustainability, but also several of its main objectives to achieve it. And one of the most important is to halt soil pollution to stop soil degradation. Therefore, once again, our scientific organization with the support of all national soil science societies that make it up worldwide, wants to express our willingness to conform together a virtuous circle of work to face soil pollution. Soil pollution, according to Rodriguez Eugenio, refers to the presence in the soil of a chemical or substance out of place and or present or at a higher than normal concentration that has adverse effects on any non-targeted organism. Chemicals is directly related to the Rio Declaration on Environment and Development, which in principle pro proclaims that human beings have the right to a healthy and productive life in harmony with nature. Meanwhile, SDG 9 draws our attention to the fact that the contamination and pollution of water, air, and soil because of the inadequate management of chemical, industrial, mining, and agricultural activities contribute, as well as the absence of waste management practice as principal causes of the severe impact on the whole biological flora and fauna, terrestrial and aquatic, affecting planetary biodiversity and therefore the balance of terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. That is why day by day, awareness increase about the need to produce and process food and raw materials that natural resources offer us through environmentally friendly process. And one of the possible paths towards achieving this environmentally friendly process and products is the practice of one chemistry that allow us to seek roots 
and carry out chemical processes that reduce the negative impact that has been carried out so far on the environment. This is a fundamental premise of sustainable development, but it is also one of the fundamental pillars of green chemistry. And it, it is in this sense that green chemistry is a natural way from which to start to contribute to the planeta planetary viability. The USS is willing to work together with FAO as a partner, not only in the dissemination of all its activities among our scientists and national societies, but also through the effective participation of the USS working group of scientists promoting and exchanging good practices, as well as sharing interdisciplinary knowledge to stimulate the development of sustainable, sustainable solutions. In this regard, the USS also proposed to FAO to organize joint activities, launching worldwide awareness initiatives, promoting joint interdisciplinary work with green chemistry networks, and educating children and citizens to halt soil pollution to stop soil degradation. FAO and USS should work together, joining efforts to face the enormous challenge of soil pollution, since we work for the same purpose to preserve soil resource as a common good of humanity. From the USS, we are clear and convinced that together we are stronger. Thanks for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Laura, for your presence. I know it's a bit earlier for you in Mexico. So thank you so much for these words are from also setting the scene on how we can collaborate together. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Marco Falconi from ISPRA, is the Institute for Protection and Research on the Environment. And he will introduce us about the Rentec Euro Expo that uh, happens every year since some years already and uh, he will tell us how we can collaborate together. So Marco, welcome. And now- Hi, you hi Natalia, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you and we can see your screen. Thank perfect, you. Perfect, perfect, so we can start. First of all, thank you for inviting me and uh, I'm honored to be uh, invited as speaker in this uh, really important uh, venue. I'm a member of the scientific committee of Remtech Europe and I represent so the scientific committee that are, where are present many of, of also of the speakers that are present today. And uh, um, regarding, uh, regarding uh, Remtech Europe, um, how a conference may help uh, the, the aims of, uh, of INSOP. Uh, let me introduce Remtech Europe that is, uh, uh, brings together soil and groundwater risk assessment and remediation practitioners from across Europe and increasingly, uh, increasingly also from around the world to share their experience and knowledge. Uh, Remtech Europe is a yearly conference of one week. Uh, this year will be 1923 of September 2022. First two days will be fully online. The last three will be hybrid with the meeting room in Ferrara, Italy, but also broadcasted online. And uh, that the reason why a conference may help uh, uh, is that it is completely free to attend, free for speakers from public companies, academics, NGOs, and there is just a fee for speakers of, uh, of uh, private companies. Uh, we know that uh, many uh, experts are from developing countries and it's not easy to get funds to pay uh, a fee that sometimes is half of the wages uh, looking to the most important conferences worldwide or also for traveling. And uh, uh, it is completely free, just the internet connection and the registration, like this meeting of today. And so I, left, I leave you all the call, uh, the link to the call of abstract and uh, the abstract template that follows SETAC uh, specifically because for fostering also the, the, um, the, the knowledge on, on uh, about, about uh, soil remediation, uh, we uh, signed a, a contract, an agreement also with SETAC with uh, this scientific scientific journal and uh, uh, regarding the the the, the topics uh, you see that are many many topics that we, we will cover and that will be sessions uh, just let me let me uh, underline some characterizing soil health 
climate change and soil nexus. Military sites, uh, uh, you know that uh, is under the debate now, uh, there are many areas that are under military occupation. And uh, let me give a big hug to uh, our uh, Ukraine expert, experts, there that are, that are many also online today. And um, so apart this, there will be also some challenging topics like uh, uh, new ways to characterize like uh, high resolution site characterization, chemical sensors, you can see digital innovation and you can see a number of, uh, a number of topics that we will cover. Uh, the deadlines are uh, closed, 30, 31 of May uh, for public parties and geo academies, 30 of June for private companies. Uh, the scope is uh, of this conference is also to increase awareness around these topics because um, yeah uh, we want to st also in some in countries worldwide the, the um, knowledge about uh, about uh, these uh, these problems these environmental problems not only the call for abstract there will be also high level training courses uh, i had just uh, uh, some uh, uh, some meetings with uh, with um, uh, with some institution we will have uh, the Joint Research Center and the European Commission that will organize a policy session. Use Army Corps of Engineer that will um, uh, organize a fight remediation and site, st site stabilization uh, training, ASTM International Phase One, the famous Phase One of uh, ASTM and molecular biological tools for supporting uh, and monitoring natural attenuation. CERPSTCP, it's an acronym that, that is a research institute uh, connected to the Department of Defense of the United States. With the, we will speak about unexploded ordnance uh, and fatens transport related to munitions that is uh, under uh, under the public debate. Like uh, like I said, ITRC with the background values uh, that um, we have some places in in the world where we have high, very high background values, and uh, uh, we have we have to think also how to manage risk uh, about those background values. Uh, we see from the previous presentation, for instance, the difference between uh, point sources and diffuse pollution and uh, Sometimes we have background values that could have a, could have a problems, and uh, so uh, there will be a training from my TRC. Other two trainings uh, should should uh, still to be decided with the ISAS and the CLAIR. These trainings will be offered for free by these institutions, so it is a great occasion uh, to for 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 who is interested to uh, to learn something more. And there is also a, another big challenging event. It's called. Uh, uh, it's called uh, Sustainiton, uh, uh, that is uh, 24 hours starting from 20 September 2022, 12 G GMT, and with the uh, end after 24 hours and 21 of September. And um, it will be a 24 hours and uh, over a whole day, we hear news how people are working towards individual SDGs, breaking down barriers to uh, assess, uh, assessing the lessons we are learning in making our soil and groundwater safe for us and for the earth, uh, earth, other creators. Experts and speakers will, will be asked to explain what their countries are doing to achieve uh, SDGs. InSOP members, as well as any other attendants, may propose their speeches to, to this email, uh, and uh, this is our, our logo. La, uh, then, we in um, Remtech Europe, we have uh, a, a network of three 300 ambassadors or the so-called Remtech Europe ambassadors. Some are also, are also present and I say hello to them uh, from 40 countries. They are coming from public authorities, academia, consultancy, NGOs. And they see a strong connection with the uh, INSOP AIMS. Uh, INSOP AIMS uh, are uh, providing, uh, uh, providing an international forum for generation dissemination knowledge, promote exchange and good practices, uh, cre um, create cooperative links for a cleaner and more sustainable solutions, and uh, strengthening cap technical and technological capacities, uh, capacities coordination among existing networks. And I think uh, this network could be together and uh, work, work together to, to foster the, 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 those aims. Last uh, final remarks, uh, I will leave you with a quotation of uh, Charles Darwin. It, it is the long history of humanity that those who learn to collaborate and improvise most effectively have prevailed. Charles Darwin looking to, to birds in uh, Galap the, uh, the far Galapagos uh, archipelagos uh, the found, uh, found a, a, a theory that was, uh, was uh, incredibly uh, breaking the, the conventional uh, thinking of the, that time. 
Uh, let me also quote the Sustainable Development Goals number 17 that recognize the need for revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development, partnership to make connections and uh, share experience, inspire, improve professional practices and engage all societies we all serve and live in. And uh, so Remtech Europe absolutely will be honored to support uh, the, the INSOP uh, initiative. Last thing, as many in the chat are uh, can't wait for a presentation. I tell you that I will post the PDF of my presentation directly in the in the uh, in the chat. Thank you very much, Natalia, and uh, hope to have to, to have stayed in on time. Thank you very much, Marco. Perfect, really. And um, yes, this is really the aim of this network: be the network of the networks, share experiences, participate in one and another. Uh, conferences, meetings, so we can really learn, bring different stakeholders to the table and share experiences and look, which is the most important part, is look for solutions because this is a problem that we cannot keep ignoring and we really need to act now. So thank you so much, Marco. Uh, for all the, the participants, we will share all the presentations and the recordings afterwards. So don't worry, you will get all the information also for those who couldn't participate. Our next speaker uh, is coming from the Joint Research Center of the European Commission is Mr. Piotr Bot Botja, sorry, I'm not pronouncing it properly. And he will present us about the European Soil Observatory. This will also help us, especially in the first uh, working area of the INSOP uh, regarding the assessment of soil pollution. So, Piotra, you have the floor and we are really looking forward to hearing you. Thank you very much, uh, Natalia, uh, and um, welcome to, uh, to everybody. I'm uh, really pleased um, to be part of this uh, big event. Uh, I'm impressed by the number of uh, participants and the quality of the presentations that we have uh, heard so far. Uh, so uh, we can uh, we can really enjoy working together um, and also improving uh, the the networking in that in that sense. Um, indeed, I would like to present some elements uh, on soil pollution and the work that the European Commission is doing. So I'm going to share the presentation with you. I hope that you see my screen. And, yes. and my presentation, thank you, Natalia. My presentation will um, point to some of the elements uh, that, that we are working on uh, as the JRC, as the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. Uh, so um, the elements will be the EU Soil Observatory. Um, I will provide you uh, some information uh, about the uh, uh, observatory that we have launched. And then the use of stakeholder forum uh, that uh, is allowing us to have the contact with uh, stakeholders and the technical working group uh, under uh, this construct that is working more specifically on soil pollution. Um, so the Euro European Soil Observatory was launched by the uh, Joint Research Center uh, over a year ago, uh, and it has uh, a couple of goals. Uh, so the first goal is the EU-wide soil monitoring. So uh, we hope that by um, launching, maintaining, and evolving the soil observatory, uh, we will uh, be able to have uh, more insights on the monitoring. Um, then uh, we would like to uh, build a stronger European soil data center. Um, the data center is located at the JRC. Uh, we are dealing with it and uh, using soil observatory, we would like to enhance it. Um, then an, another goal is the monitoring of soil related policies. Uh, we would like to follow uh, the implementation of the European policies and also uh, being able uh, to see what's the impact of those policies and whether there are some measures uh, to be implemented to correct uh, if necessary. Um, then goal number four is uh, the support uh, for research and innovation. Uh, so through our work, networking, and also providing uh, the stakeholder forum, uh, we would like to uh, enhance this activity. Last but not least, um, by the European Soil Observatory, we are providing the stakeholder forum, uh, which uh, I will explain in the next uh, slide. The EU stakeholder forum, um, we would like it to be the place where the ideas and views on a particular issue can be exchanged. Um, so uh, by, by doing this, uh, we enhance the stakeholder engagement, 
Uh, we would also support uh, um, soil literacy. Um, and um, I would like to underline here the uh, proposed soil health and food mission uh, that, uh, that is running now uh, and uh, will have um, a big impact uh, at least in uh, Europe and we hope also at uh, international scale. And of course, uh, we would also collect the feedback through the um, stakeholder forum. Uh, the first meeting took place uh, of the stakeholder forum. Uh, there's some info online, so um, there's uh, links uh, in my presentation. Um, and um, the stakeholder forum launched particular groups of interest. Uh, one of the groups is a group on soil pollution. Uh, so you see here the the link and uh, you can have more information or uh, you can contact me if you would like to um, receive more. Um, what's the um, work of the technical working group on soil pollution that we have launched? Our first task is to provide the support to the Clean Soil Outlook report. We would like to see what's the current situation, what are the trends, where are the gaps to be closed. Uh, so as you see here, um, at the first place, uh, we are going together with the technical working group on soil pollution to analyze synergies and trade-offs between different EU policies. We are working in the EU context. Um, then we would like also to uh, help to translate early warnings into recommendations on, on pollutants of increasing concern. Um, so we are speaking here about uh, ultrafine particles, emerging contaminants, pesticides, metals. So these are the substances that probably exist in our European soils. We can see them through monitoring, or we maybe cannot see them, uh, but we are aware that they are there. Uh, so that's why we need a kind of early warning um, and uh, to have a kind of watch list um, to, uh, to get more information about those uh, emerging contaminants. Then, of course, we are going to use the um, r depsir approach, so driving uh, forces, pressure, state, impact, and resources to analyze the, the situation. And in this report, we are going to provide some projections and foresight uh, consideration. The Clean Soil Outlook report will be the JRC report uh, that will uh, be uh, ready by the end of this year, and it will be a kind of uh, rolling exercise. So the next one is foreseen in uh, two years' time, out of which uh, we will distill the high-level synthesis report uh, that will be published officially by the European Commission. Um, what's the situation that we are going to analyze uh, concerning the soil pollution? Of course, uh, diffuse and uh, point type sources of uh, pollution. Um, as uh, Joachim Delgenio mentioned in his uh, presentation, when we talk about zero pollution ambition, we have to tackle uh, all three uh, media. Uh, so air, water, and soil, um, and uh, of course, um, focus on, on different aspects and interactions between all those media. I will uh, go to I go through very rapidly through slides uh, to, to, to save time, but the presentations will be uh, available. What are the European challenges for point type sources of pollution? Um, first of all, we would like to be able to make a significant progress on uh, the remediation of contaminated sites. Um, and also uh, include um, legally binding provisions on contaminated sites identification, inventorization, and remediation. As uh, Professor Ravi Naidu was presenting the numbers, we'd like to have more uh, informative, more up-to-date numbers uh, for, for Europe. Uh, we have to think also about uh, waste management and landfills in this context. When it comes to diffuse pollution, of course, we have to um, tackle the definitions and knowledge and also the perceived obstacle uh, that there is the, the lack uh, of the knowledge on the extent of the ex um, diffuse pollution and how to monitor it and how to uh, enhance uh, research. And um, last but not least, uh, in all of these aspects, digital, digital technologies are important. How they can help us, how they can uh, try to innovate our uh, approaches. Um, last but not least, the multidisciplinary approach. Um, I think uh, it was already mentioned a couple of times uh, during the presentations. Uh, so um, we are going to um, tackle, for the time being, the lack of this multidisciplinary approach um, to be able to model at the European scale uh, some, some aspects. Uh, but uh, we hope that uh, with the research, 
uh, at some point will be able to uh, provide the, um, the tools. My last slide, um, the, the flags diagram. I was mentioning the, the watch list. Uh, the watch list, so the kind of identification of a substance of concern uh, that um, we uh, would like to have more information um, or uh, follow it up in the European Soyuz. Uh, so we have developed um, and discussing with the technical working group um, on soil pollution, this flux diagram, how, how to identify, how to tackle the substance. Uh, so first of all, I, I would like to see the pathways of the substance to, um, to soil. Then um, if we see that there's no concern for ecosystems, for health, um, and uh, for environment, there is no problem. But if the substance is of concern, maybe we have to include it in the priority list of substances being watched through a monitoring program. Or if we don't have enough information, maybe we have to put the substance on the watch list. Maybe we have to observe it um, over a couple of years and then decide whether the substance is dangerous, is present, and ha has to be monitored more. Uh, uh, closely. Um, if you want to have more information, please visit our uh, website, the JRC website, and also um, use the EU Soil Observatory link that is provided in my uh, presentation. So thank you very much for your attention, um, and uh, I'm uh, happy to answer uh, the questions, if any. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Piotr. Well, now we have been moving no, a bit from the academia, knowledge sharing or knowledge generation. Now we are in the assessment part, how to collect data, how to uh, harmonize data also, which is very important. And our next speaker will bring also the policy side. He's, uh, he's representing the Common Forum on Contaminated uh, Land, uh, Mr. Dietmar Miller Graber. And he will bring us, uh, or he will explain us how this policy and policymakers network can also support the international network on soil pollution. Dietmar, it's a pleasure to have you, and you have the floor. Thanks, Natalia. Greetings from Vienna around the globe, the planet. Um, well, uh, by today, Earth Day, you open a new window of opportunity, we would hope. And it's a brief presentation how we can cooperate. So Common Forum uh, is a network like the international network, but it's a regulator's network. We existed roughly since uh, more than 25 years. Uh, we have regular meetings two times a year, and our missions are rather similar to yours. We work on knowledge exchange. We want to build an offer and a discussion platform. And we not only want to do it within the governments, but also with all third parties and stakeholders. Um, so soil and societies, it's, it's really about one health we are, should work forward. And we, we need to work across scales and connect scales. So, the new, your new network uh, should govern the others and even common forum uh, and might be the missing link to strengthen strategies and improving actions globally. Well, joint ambitions and objectives are rather obvious. We are all wishing for a stronger recognition and better stewardship of soil. Um, Still, we need to do more to look for co-creation to improve our common understanding for making it available to all the stakeholders across the global regions. And of course, we need to uh, underlie it by sound evidence base to enable better decisions. But last but not least, we should work on good communication. We need a storytelling, we need new narratives. So, what is Common Forum thinking or might be discussing uh, about the co-creation area with the International Network on Soil Pollution? Uh, the focus for sure will be with the regulation of polluted soils. That's where the expertise of the network is. So here we are glad to share our experiences, the successes and the failures as well. 
And we really also want to learn from other peers to how to connect policy, science, and society. And we all, there is a limitation in resources. We will need to prioritize actions for tackling pollution. A second line of action might be of interest in terms of the sustainable management and remediation of polluted soils. Um, just to tease and challenge you, whether there could be further actions of interest. What I'm still missing is kind of, a, well, emergency response or rapid intervention force, uh, like uh, responding to war or natural disasters. Just recently, uh, last year, there was a tsunami at the Pacifics and there was an oil spill at the port of Lima. And there was a need to really then react and exchange knowledge. So, but that's really then a personal basis today to organize it more straightforward, that would be great. And besides all the knowledge we may offer, that's still uh, how to support and organize financial funds for the real, risky sites around the world that would be probably beyond common forum for sure might maybe also be beyond your ambitions but still that's something to keep in mind maybe and let me close um, well just by two remarks please let us keep in mind that prevention is the most important uh, in terms of remediation look for the quote by Chanel Manoa and I wish success to INSOP for making a difference in soil remediation. Good luck. Thank you so much, Dietmar. Indeed, you have raised some important points um, where I think FAO has a, a clear advantage is that we are in close cooperation and contact with uh, member states and it's our uh, role and our mandate to support countries to react again against existing problems, but also emergencies. And as you may know, FAO has a very strong uh, division working on emergencies. And I think this network can really support that division uh, regarding soil pollution issues. So this is a very important point to consider uh, regarding the INSOP mission and vision. So thank you so much for bringing this to the, to the table. Our next speaker will go more in detail regarding what the private sector can do, uh, how companies can help and can collaborate to have a sustainable remediation. Uh, he's the president, the, the current president of Nicole Europe. Nicole is a network uh, of mainly private companies working on uh, remedy um, management of contaminated land, mainly industrial contaminated land. So, Mr. Johan de Frey, you have the floor. Thank you for being us with us uh, today with us presenting uh, Nicole Network. Thank you, Nahdaria. I'll uh, I'll see my slides appear. I think automatically. Um, yes, Isabel, please. Co yeah. Co congratulations uh, with with this initiative. So, as as Nicole, we're all about collaboration and partnerships, and I'm also happy that Marco actually referred to SDG 17, which strives to make organizations such as the ones that are together today to to collaborate on particular uh, sustainable development issues right so um, without much further ado I'll, I'll share a little bit around what nicole does and uh, how i think very practically actually how we can work together with um with insult um, so if we can move to the next slide and, and the one thereafter, yeah, exactly. Um, so what is Nicole? Nicole was established uh, over 25 years ago as an industrial network with funding from the European Commission. Um, that funding at one point dried up as, as it usually does. And uh, the members felt that the, the value of getting together as a community of practitioners was so valuable that um, it now became a member funded only network and it broadened to to more than industrial parties we have service providers as members uh, consultants contractors legal organizations and academia academia is actually one of our growing uh, uh, groups and the intent really is of of creating that network of of practitioners who focus on cleaning up 
uh, contaminated labs, finding state-of-the-art solutions, look at innovative approaches um, in, in how you can do this the most effectively. So moving to the next slide, uh, as a network, as you, would, as you would imagine, we have a number of workshops per year on a particular topic. We try to, to flick between, on the one hand, more re regulatory-oriented topics, policy-oriented, and technological or technical subjects, so it, it switches. Um, uh, we also have working groups, as you can see, on selected uh, subjects, and, and it's the members that decide what working groups they want and what the scope and, and deliverables will be. We have one on land stewardship, which is a very hot topic these days and which really brings in the concept of circularity uh, of soil and land as, as finite resources. So what do you do with that when you have a contaminated land? We've also instigated a number of awards, both on uh, to award uh, or, or reward organizations or individuals that come up with very innovative solutions or practical approaches that are quite novel, that we want to create some visibility around as well as awards for academic prowess or academic achievements. Uh, that could be travel awards, that could be um, uh, just a, an award, a financial award for a very good thesis, um, in order to, again, stimulate academic uh, development within our network. That often leads to publications, position papers, as you would imagine. And what we're also doing far more of um, is engage with other organizations and obviously the FAO is, is one of them but we have representation in the EU uh, soil observatory we're discussing with the ALGA in, in Australia and New Zealand we have links with with Ravi uh, that I think we should develop even further um, we have spin-offs uh, of Nicole in Latin America and Africa that that are growing in terms of of the collaboration that we have with them and then Dietmar, of course, we, we work closely with the Common Forum uh, around common to topics, and, and we have sometimes joint workshops uh, in, that, in that perspective. So moving to the next slide, um, what could be the contribution that Nicole can bring to, to INSOP? Um, I, I came up with a number of ideas in, in the slides following. Could be joint workshops where we, as, as a common community right we we think it's a, it's a hot topic it's an it's an item that needs attention that you join that we we develop joint workshops around that where you share ex expertise and actually come up with solutions that are workable that are practical that can be that are achievable right because we want to go beyond theory here i believe um so how how do you do that what do you do what expertise do you need and what is missing so that leads to thought leadership that you can jointly develop. Um, and I think INSOP, and I really wish that as, a, as this network of networks that we can weigh on cleaning up contaminated land and groundwater and by extension other environmental media. Uh, that would be fantastic if we could achieve that. That takes you to the element of risk and what is risk and what needs, what needs cleanup. Immediately linked to sustainability. Um, and ultimately, as I mentioned earlier, land stewardship is this, this newer topic that we and Nicole at least try to develop some, some leadership around as to what does that mean in practice? What does it mean when you say soil is a, is a finite resource that you need to take care of um, and therefore you bring in circularity and continuous ability to use that soil for all the purposes and values that it brings? So those are ideas. Uh, ra rather generic, but I, I'd love to develop them further as, as INSOP de develops. Um, and let me move on to something else that in Nicole we're, we're trying to build. It's quite fresh and it's in the next few slides, um, which is the Nicole Foundation. Uh, we are aiming to set up a foundation by the end of the year. And the idea is, as you see, is to focus on orphan sites, sites where the polluter pays principle is no longer achievable um, and where we are looking for on the one hand problem owners that could be um, an FAO that could be a, a, a national government that says we have this major issue we don't know how to tackle it we don't have the expertise we don't have money and so the foundation would be this this nexus where you bring in expertise from Nicole and beyond right um, as well as donors, 
um, industrial organizations that are willing to chip in um, and volunteers, because one of the strengths of, of, of networks like Nicole, but it's true for any of the other networks that, have, that I've seen in today, is that you have this enormous community of expertise. And more importantly, a lot of people that are retiring from that community. I think we're seeing this first generation that has been full-time in employment around contaminated land management that is retiring. We see it in our network and in, and in our uh, professional community, but that still have a willingness to contribute and now actually have time to contribute to whatever it is that they like. So we want to provide that, that opportunity for them to have a, 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 a venue or, or, a, or, a, or a scheme that they can participate in and contribute to solving some of these very hard to solve pollu uh, pollutions. The aim is to restore biodiversity, support the production of safe food, and again, applying circular economy to, to land in general. That, that is the ultimate aim of what the foundation would like to achieve. Moving to the next slide and, 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 I, and the last slide actually, what would be the benefits is that you bring in all these stakeholders and they all have their own particular benefits, right? An NGO or a multilateral organization would re receive fast, easy access to skilled professionals for particular issues that they want res resolution. And I have one example actually in the last slide hereafter. We have funders, but before we move to the next slide, go back one, please. We have funders that uh, could be professional industrial companies that will have an auditable process on how they can promote their own environment and social and, and governance objectives and achieve UN SDGs if, if, if they have those as goals. So the foundation would provide an auditable process uh, pro for, the, for the donations they do. We have, again, the volunteers that have a, 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 a setup where they can where they can join and select projects to participate in. And ultimately all these parties would receive the benefit of professional project management with clear scope management, target management, financial management that leads to an actual practical result. So one example of that is in the next slide. Um, and we're working with FAO on this one is where we have assembled a group of experts from across Europe um, and Latin America, but because this particular uh, project is in Latin America, where we're running a pilot to look at cadmium impacts to cocoa and how we can come up with a, with a simple scheme that can then be applied worldwide as to how you deal with diffuse pollution that affects a particular crop and how you can actually identify the sources, maybe come up with some remedial activities, um, and look at, you know, build a conceptual site model and then, you know, come up with some tangible approaches on how you solve that problem. No promises that you can actually solve every problem, but we want to at least use the pilot to come up with a methodology that is simple to use. So this is one typical thing that a, a foundation uh, organized by Nicole could, could achieve. And we're very enthusiastic about this, about this project. So with that, I would like to conclude and again thank you for the opportunity for us to uh, to contribute to this extremely important initiative. Thank you. Thank you so much, Johan. Yeah, I think this uh, this foundation is exactly one of the uh, the leading examples that we want to follow with the international network on soil pollution to bring together experts that can provide this expertise to to the rest of the world as. And as, as you mentioned, and as we have seen, many of the most knowledgeable colleagues are already retiring. So it's our opportunity to really learn from them and to, to build the capacities of the new generation. So thank you so much for contributing to this. And now we will hear a bit more about the branch of Nicole in Latin America. It will be her director, Ms. Ana Cristina Moeri, who will present what Nicole Latin America is specifically doing <clears throat> on sustainable remediation, but especially on building capacities. So Ana, I see your slides. You have the floor. Thank you, Natalia. Is it on presentation modus? Not yet. We see your screen. Um, no. Yes, perfect. Okay. So thanks a lot, Natalia, for the 
for inviting Ecos Brazil to present the initiative in Latin America. Uh, as you said, I'm the president, director president of Ecos Brazil, uh, which is an NGO based in Sao Paulo, Brazil, uh, with 20 years of experience in projects involving remediation of contaminated land, conservation of biodiversity, impact investment, climate change, with uh, in projects that aim to collaborate with the regeneration of the global ecosystem. We work with projects uh, with the public and the private sector during these 20 years. If we go back in history to see the history of contaminated land in Brazil, uh, it, we, we see that remediation is still a very new topic compared to Europe and to the US. So if we go back to late 90s, early 2000s, we have only a few technologies and methodologies that are still in very early development. We have only a few consulting companies and industries working very independently with no contact and no um, uh, research between them. We have an environmental legislation related to contaminated sites that is still in early stage and very bureaucratic and uh, a very slow process for the companies. And during this time in 2002, Ecos Brazil uh, decides to do a first seminar on remediation of contaminated sites that was the first of its kind in Latin America. And the first edition was uh, organized in partnership with the GIZ, GIZ, the German organization that could bring some international speakers to our event. And the idea was to, to share knowledge and to bring some innovative solutions to the Latin America reality. And during these 20 years the, the seminar could um, could follow the market growth and see how the market developed in these last years, in these 20 years, where we organized 12 editions. Um, and one of the of a very important achievement of this in this event was the, the creation of Nicol Brazil in 2013. The idea was emerged during one of the seminar, during one of the editions of the seminar. And the objective was to, to create a tropicalized version of the Nepal Europe that was presented by Johan and to bring that to the Brazilian reality first. And later on, we expanded to other Latin American countries, organizing some events, but to bring together these experts and to share the knowledge in Latin America. Ecos Brazil does the, the, um, the administrative support and the organizational support, which is done by Luciana uh, um, from Ecos Brazil, and also the financial management of this network. It is the, the only of its kind in Latin America that brings together the industries, the service providers, and the universities, and this collaboration has been very fruitful. We have been able to develop very interesting events and, and workshops and, and so on. Nicole is organizing several uh, workshops and events in Brazil, but also in other countries of Latin America. We did one in Lima in 2018. We organized one in Argentina. Nicole is participating in some international events. And to mention one interesting case is last year we participated, we presented during a workshop in the Nicole Africa event, the Sustrem Africa 2021, uh, a case of a mega site that we discussed in Brazil to, to bring it to the African reality. So that is an example of uh, uh, events that are happening in partnership with other networks already. We are also doing a lot of publications, position papers, white papers in Portuguese, in Spanish that are being used by the community in Latin America. 
And for you to see some of the numbers of Nepal, we are being very active. So we have several companies participating. We have many active members. We did a lot of podcasts in the last years during, during, uh, during the, the pandemic where people were at home. We, we have been able to organize several virtual events. And so we have been very active in the last years. And as my other colleagues also mentioned, I think it's very important to have this kind of exchange uh, of innovative ideas and technologies. Uh, it was the way that Nicole Latin America started to have an exchange with other networks. We are working like that in, with Nicole Africa. We are working on that Cadmium project that Johan mentioned. And for us, that's very important. We are also expanding uh, with other in other countries of Latin America. We have access to various relevant institutions in Latin America, and we see a lot of possibilities of collaboration between the networks, of course, for raising the awareness in global uh, regarding soil health. So I leave you here my contact and from my colleague Luciana, which is doing the secretary of this network, in case you have any questions and I'm able to answer them. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Hannah, for this insightful presentation and also for pointing out uh, all the benefits of partnership. So thank you so much. I'm afraid that we are running out of time. So please participants, if you have any questions for the presenters, don't hesitate to put it in the chat, and I encourage my colleagues to address the, the questions that may be in the chat in the Q&A uh, that are directed to you, because I wanted to have more interactive session here, but I think it will be impossible, although it has been really interesting to hear all of you and learning from our, your experience. Our last speaker for this section is <clears throat> Uh, representing the network called Claire from UK, who is providing services for all those involved in sustainable land reuse. Um, she's uh, Nicola Harris, who will present us about the Claire uh, network. Nicola, I think you are here, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Can you see that in presentation mode? Not yet, we see the presentation in addition. There you go. Is that working? Okay, perfect. Excellent. So I thank you very much to, to everyone who's spoken before um, for the invite. Um, being the last person, um, I'm going to be very quick and building on what everybody has said and the huge value of networking and sharing, sharing knowledge. And this is where Claire um, basically exists. It's all about sharing knowledge. So we were established back in 1999. Um, we are a not-for-profit organization that works in a very broad environmental construction sector promoting sustainable land reuse. And we are slightly different to the networks that presented earlier because we, we work directly with industry, so the practitioners, but we also work very closely with government, the regulators, and academia. And we often work on collaborative projects within the UK and internationally, but we are based in the UK. Uh, and we are focusing very much on improving efficiency and raising industry standards. Um, and as I said at the beginning, we are all about knowledge sharing. So this is where we feel there's huge value working closely with INSOP. We do also, all of our publications are independently reviewed. We have a technical panel that are all independent and they review everything that we actually publish. And we have a large library of guidance documents that are all freely available for everyone to access. And we also have a library of links to other industry groups publications as well. So things that are freely available, we have links to, but the Claire library is, is totally, totally free. So as I mentioned, the wall, which is um, abbreviated from the Water and Land Library, 
it's a very large extensive list of links across the soil and groundwater um, sphere so basically lots and lots of publications are are linked to there so it's a really good resource for people to access but the Clare publications we have hundreds of technical publications that have all been peer reviewed that are easily digestible for people to access so they cover research elements they also cover practical uh, demonstration of technologies it covers um, specific technical areas so much more specific technical aspects or dealing with LNAP or contamination for example so there's some really useful resources that people um, can access which I think would be really useful for the network of, of insert all the members. Um, we have a large network linkages across um, the globe so people like Ravi we we link to and, and Nicole we we participate in in dialogue with so we also um, produce a monthly e-alert so the promotion again of INSOP that's a way we think we can help generate more um, activity we have uh, national forums regional forums that we link to and we help um, promote so again this is a, a useful way that we can all work together and it's all about promoting good good practice so i just wanted to then focus on some of the projects that we've been working on that we actually lead and and run that i think would also be very very useful for from the soil um, aspect so one of them uh, we talk about reusing of soil because soil is such a finite resource we actually manage a a system within the UK, which is a voluntary system that is endorsed by our regulator of how we can use soil and reuse it on site rather than using new valuable resource. So we've got a, a very large brownfield network within the UK, we reuse our land a lot. So we have a, a process that is documented, it's a code of practice that people could reuse um, in other countries and in fact they have used um, the this code in and replicated it in other countries so again there's there's opportunities to replicate knowledge already developed for for insop again uh, another big area that was was mentioned about sustainability we uh, we run the surf uk which is a sustainable remediation forum in in the uk and that is a collaboration between industry the regulators academia and consultants we've produced a number of um, technical documentation that again members can access they can use all free of charge uh, we've also under the surf uk framework we've developed some simple tools to help people uh, assess sustainability during site um, site work and remediation so again these are all in existence all accessible all free of charge so i think hugely valuable to um, people within within the network and if people wanted to understand what sustainable remediation is there's a, a three minute animation on the surf uk website that um, helps people understand the main principles of sustainable remediation and that again is has actually been uh, translated into 16 different languages so all of these resources I think would be hugely valuable another um, initiative that we run because of the surf UK um, network there are now uh, surf sustainable remediation for across the globe and we meet uh, twice twice a year via teleconference and we share best practice uh, we share knowledge what we're doing within our own countries for uh, sustainable remediation to help collaborate and joint initiatives again these are things that i think would be hugely valuable to share uh, across across insop as well and other things we are developing soil screening values within the UK um, as a collaboration project. Um, so again, this is a an example of how people can work collaboratively uh, within government 
as well as regulators, as well as practitioners to, to build that, uh, share that knowledge and build that um, trust between each other. So we're developing that within, within the UK. And um, last but not least, we're working on a really interesting uh, European funded research project with, with partners on reconstructing soils from waste. So again, the results of that will be available to be shared. And this is, this is hugely valuable because obviously we've, we've talked about the value of soil and how we can reconstruct soil to prevent having to use the finite natural resources of soils. And this is also looking at the soil carbon capture and incorporating those, those elements and how we can reuse some of the what would be deemed waste materials um, previously and how they can actually be generated into growing medium for, for use on, um, on sites. So all of this information is, you know, is freely available from the, from the CLARE website. So I'd actively encourage you all to just um, access the information and if anybody needs further information, they can they can contact me me there so thank you natalia thank you so much nicola well i think uh, yeah there are a huge bunch of information already out there and what we can do is just make it more visible make it more accessible to everyone and also to adjust or adapt some of these uh, documents that has been produced for example for the uk to other national realities. So really, this is really the, the aim of this network. So thank you so much. With this, uh, well, thank you to all the speakers. It has been uh, a long, but a very interesting session. We have learned all the networks, or not all, some of the networks that are out there doing great things. And uh, it, I think it's really important that we all collaborate and leverage on what the others are doing. So I will just now pass the baton to my colleague Serge to continue with the, the next session where we will discuss more about the focus of this network. We have been learning about what the others are doing, what are the possible connections that we may have, and now we will really enter into the discussion for what we want this network and what we want this ne network to focus on. So now, Serge, the floor is yours. You take the the button for the next, next session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you, all speakers. It was a very interesting and informative discussion about learning about all different networks and organizations in the field. So as Natalia uh, briefly explained now, uh, we will jump to the second part of the um, INSOP where we will learn uh, more about how the INSOP is going to be structured and what we aim to achieve. So I hope you can all see my screen. OK. So in this part of the presentation, uh, I'll try to be much shorter than I was planned uh, because Friday evening is approaching. So in this presentation, we will cover the following topics. First now, we'll ex explain our mission objectives and goals in the areas of work that NSOP is willing to work on in much more details. Then, uh, as you know, you all have um, filled in the survey once registering. And at that survey, we asked you if you feel that any additional activities of work you would like to see at INSOP. And so that's, uh, we've selected some of those additional activities of work that might be of interest uh, for, um, for an INSOP. So we're going to open the poll for you to vote uh, where we're going to add one, two, or maybe all of them, or perhaps none of the above, depends on the votes, to the INSOP. Following that, we're gonna have a terms of reference a briefing for a chair and vice chair position. And after that, we have three candidates who will uh, give us a two minute speech on their motivation, why they would like to be a chair or vice chair of, of uh, the INSOP. And uh, the most interesting part, we're gonna do elections. So that will be a very interesting session now. So uh, the first part of the presentation is that uh, I'm gonna explain you the four areas of work um, that INSOP will focus on, under each of which various tasks will be carried out to achieve the results, which will be presented by Natalia later after myself. 
um, and she will explain more details uh, about each task under each area of work. In brief, those four areas are assessment, mapping of soil pollution, monitoring regulation of polluted soils, and finally, sustainable management and remediation. In much more broader sense, so let me go through each of them and what we're gonna uh, cover in each of those areas. So for assessment, well, this area of work will focus on harmonizing laboratory methods or standard operation procedures for the measurement of soil contaminants, including innovative technologies working together with another uh, GSP network called GLOSLAN, stands for Global Soil Laboratory Network. Uh, her chair, Ms. Miriam Ostinelli, uh, will give us a short speech about GLOSLAN and how she can see uh, the synergies between these two networks, between GLOSLAN and INSOP. What we also want to see in this assessment area of work is that a training program will be established for the application of harmonized methods as well as specialized technical equipment. Um, for the medium and long-term goal, our task will be uh, to serve and compile all existing threshold values for different contaminants, the most common contaminants, the contaminants of potential concern, uh, and different land uses, not only agriculture, but urban land uses, forestry, etc., uh, where we would like to generate standard threshold values or the range for an international application, because currently we don't have those kind of threshold values established for contaminants of concern. And this will also promote the inclusion of soil pollution metrics and indicators into a conventional soil service and indicator um, and the inclusion of data and information on soil pollution into national and global soil information systems. So that's in brief what the assessment will focus on. Our second area of work is soil pollution. Well, as you know, the generation of a spatial data sets on the distribution of polluted soils and potential source pollutions are of utmost importance uh, in order to establish and identify those hotspot areas or areas of concern that um, have the risk and possess the risk to human health and the environment. Um, the existence of information uh, on sources of pollution will also allow for a better understanding of the coexistence of contaminants and facilitate the management of sites with mixed contaminants. In order to carry out the mapping exercise and mapping areas, we need to collaborate more with another network uh, of GSP, which is called INSEE, International Network of Soil Information Institutes. Um, the chair of the INSEE, Mr. Luca Montanarella, will give us uh, also a brief speech and talk about what INSEE does and how we can also collaborate between INSEE and INSOP. The third area of work is monitoring and regulation of polluted soils. That's more related to regulations because the monitoring of polluted soils requires the establishment of regulatory frameworks which support the collection of information and the comparison of data to define those trends. And this regulatory frameworks should include soil health indicators to assess the state of soil. Our network, INSOP, will advocate for the creation and strengthening of global, regional, and national commitments in order to prevent, hold, and remediate polluted soils. And this area of work, monitoring and regulation, should help countries to develop and strengthen the monitoring of different uh, source of pollution from point source and diffuse soil pollution, as was mentioned by Professor Ravi Naidu and their differences at national regional levels. And as part of its activity, this area of work monitoring regulation will support countries in establishing national biomonitoring and epidemiological surveillance systems in order to identify, assess, monitor damage and disease caused by soil pollution and support preventative measures. And finally, our fourth area of work will concentrate on remediation and sustainable management. Um, as you know, the collection and dissemination of sustainable management and remediation practices and technologies for polluted soils with special emphasis on nature-based solutions is very important. Hence, we would like to focus on nature-based remediations where it's possible. And for this, INSOP will work closely with the final network, uh, NETSOP, International Network on Soil Biodiversity, 
where Ms. Rosalina Gonzalez, um, the vice chair of the network, will also give us a speech and presentation um, on the what NetSub does and how we can collaborate between each other. Um, so technological transfer and cross-capacity buildings will be advocated from regions and countries with extensive knowledge and experience to the regions uh, that are less developed uh, and has less practice and experience. So that's going to be more kind of uh, exchange ideas and practices uh, between one country to another where it's needed. So those kind of four areas of work um, that we would like to concentrate and we will concentrate. As I said, each of those areas uh, has already allocated tasks that we would like to discuss and agree on. But since we're a new network, we're open for um, a new areas of work that uh, may be uh, added to an INSOP. According to the surveys that we have received from all the participants, uh, these areas of work were the most common for you that you have input and um, um, commented on. And now we would like to hear your opinion and uh, see your votes, whether you would like to add any of those areas of work to INSOP. One of them is thematic trainings for different audiences. So provide more training um, to different population in rural areas and much more remote uh, areas, kind of education, uh, which as you heard, I haven't uh, touched yet. So we think this can be added to the INSOP area. Second one is the relationship between not only soil, but also water, groundwater, for example, because if we have polluted soil, the chance that we can have polluted groundwater or any other water bodies are quite high. So we can add this area of work into INSOP. Third one is awareness raising. Um, again, to uh, have more educational um, trainings to different um, groups. Next one is translation of our findings to not only foul languages, but also to other non-foul languages so that much more vast public can have access to the information. Soil planning uh, can be another uh, opportunity to add the area of work in that sense, more investigative approach uh, in evaluation whether the risks are here for, um, for soil contaminants or not. And finally, food safety slash food quality and soil pollution, the relationship of how food quality changes with the polluted sites or where the crops are polluted by something. So those kind of um, areas of work that we're open for you to decide uh, if you want to see them in, at the area or not. So now um, I would like to draw your attention to the poll that I will launch in a second. Um, for you to vote. And I encourage all of you to vote and uh, say to us whether you would like to add one of them or few of them or all of them or even none of them to those four pillars of work. So uh, I would like uh, Isabel to give me uh, the access to launch the poll, please, if it's possible. The poll is already launched. Okay. Perfect. So I encourage all participants, attendees to vote uh, for the area that you think will be benefit for an INSOP to consider and allocate a different tasks to one of those areas. If you feel that it is uh, not necessary, you can uh, say none of the above, for example. Here's an option for you. So no excuses not to vote. Gonna have uh, a minute or two for everybody to have a chance to vote. I see it's already forty percent of uh, participants voted, so let's wait a bit more.
Okay, see people are still voting, but just for sake of time, I think we can stop here. Um, well, as you can see the results on the screen, right? Yes, we can see them. And we also see that uh, people would like to consider soil and water relationship at, in INSAP uh, as one of the most important, followed by food safety, food quality, and soil pollution. So 69 and 65% uh, participants voted for these two areas of work to include. So I guess um, we can for surely include those two, right, Natalia? And uh, consider them in our area of work and allocate the tasks and identify gaps, which we're facing at the moment, right? Okay, uh, so that's been decided. Thank you very much for your participation. Uh, in that sense, uh, everything is recorded, so make sure we will uh, add those two um, at INSOP. And um, where's my presentation? Oops, where's my presentation? Okay, here is my presentation. Can you all see it? Yeah, full screen? Okay, perfect. Yes. Yeah. And now I would like to move to one of the most interesting and interactive part of our INSOP network is to introduce um, terms of references for chair and a vice chair position. So since this is the first time we're launching this network, obviously each network needs to have both chair and a vice chair. Who will be responsible to ensure that INSOP plan is executed and ensure that work objectives are met in time and updated when necessary? Chair and vice chair will help to organize uh, annual meetings, collaborate with different uh, GSP networks such as uh, NC, uh, NetSOP, Glossalan, and GSP Secretariat. Uh, we'll maintain active communication between all involved parties. It will also ensure that the GSP 18 outcome document is executed and the INSOP is actively involved. The chair and vice chair also need to report jointly with the GSP secretariat and the ITPS chair to the GSP plenary assembly about the INSA progress. Uh, he, she will need to attend meetings of other relevant networks and events. And finally, uh, advocate for the mobilization of resources to execute the INSA work plan, as well as the establishment and consolidation of the Global Soil Pollution Observatory. Here's the note that the term of the chairperson, vice chairperson is two years extendable by the, the INSOP decision to a second term. Having this ahead, uh, we have three uh, potential candidates uh, whom I would like to give the floor for each to give an introduction and motivation why they would like to be a chair slash vice chair of the INSOP. I would like to remind uh, all candidates that they will have two minutes, unfortunately, uh, no longer because we're already um, out of time. So uh, with this in mind, I would like to first introduce uh, Dr. Dae Hu, who will have two minutes now to present himself and give a motivation, one, two sentences of why uh, he needs to be the chair or vice chair of the INSOP. So Dr. Hu, uh, the floor is yours, please. Oh, thank you, Serge. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay, great. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, friends and colleagues. Um, I'm uh, Dei Yi Ho. I'm currently the head of soil and groundwater division at the School of Environment in Tsinghua University in, Qing, in China. Tsinghua University is ranked number nine globally in the environmental science field. We have a very strong soil pollution research group at Tsinghua and I hope to build a strong collaboration with more organizations and the research institutes. Next, I want to introduce myself a little bit. I have graduated from Tsinghua University with a bachelor degree, from Stanford University with a master's degree, and from the University of Cambridge with a PhD degree. I have worked as a soil remediation engineer in the United States for 10 years, and have worked as a faculty member at Tsinghua University for over six years. I've published over 160 SCR journal papers, including first author and corresponding author papers in top journals, such as Nature, Science, Nature Climate Change, and Nature Sustainability. I was recognized as a global highly studied researcher in 2021. Currently, I'm also serving as the editor-in-chief for the international journal Soil Use and Management. In recent years, I'm working hard to promote international communication and collaboration. I started to organize an annual 
International Conference Series on Soil Remediation in 2018. In 2019, we had nearly 800 participants to the second conference. Currently, the conference series is on hold due to the pandemic, but we plan to carry on in the near future. I've also worked on two FAO technical documents in collaboration with dozens of international soil pollution experts. One document is the technical guideline on soil pollution assessment, for which I served as the chapter chair for mapping soil pollution. The other document is techniques and technologies for the remediation and the management of polluted soils, for which I served as the chapter chair for sustainable remediation. I'm very glad that FAO is launching the international network on soil pollution. I'm sure we could all make great use of this platform to strengthen global collaboration and the knowledge sharing in soil pollution prevention and restoration. Personally, I hope that I could use both my academic experiences and practical experiences to serve this community, to strengthen ties between researchers and the practitioners and the policymakers, and also to strengthen ties between the community in China and the rest of the world. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Dr. Hu, for uh, time. Uh, you, you were actually on two minutes, so that's perfect. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, pleasure to meet with you. And uh, let's uh, first, before vote, let's hear other uh, potential candidates for a position. The next speaker will be Dr. Partha Pratim uh, Chakravari. Uh, Dr. Uh, Pratim, you have your ten, two minutes uh, for introduction and motivation. And the floor is yours, please. Thank you. Thank you. May I uh, Dr. Parry, your, your connection is not very stable. Hello. 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 Yes. Okay. Now? It's yes, it's better. Yours, it's yours, please. Yes. Um, myself, Dr. Parthubutin Chakravarti, I'm the professor associate in uh, in postgraduate department of zoology at the Northern Rural Academy College, West Bengal, India. My research is PhD 35 years. My broad field of research is soil geology and soil ecotoxicology. And I have got a lot of uh, work, uh, like fellow of the National Academy of Sciences and uh, as a member of the Royal Society of the Biology. My specific area of research is the effect of pesticides and heavy metal pollution in soil humidity ecological beneficial soil micro and microfauna under both field and laboratory conditions. Deep fullness of enzymes like acid alkaline, esterase, metallophyline, glutathione, just can suggest as a potential biomarker of the spring cell and aquam to detect the pesticides and heavy metal pollution in soil, establishment of ecological safe dose of selected pesticides to enhance the biological diversity of soil and also help the productivity of crop and maintain the insect pest attack below the economic threshold level. Bioremediation of pesticide pollution in soil using gut content of bacteria of selected species of aquam and you know the polythene and polypropylene is also responsible for soil pollution. I am also working in this particular field using the bacteria obtained from the gut of selected species of heartworm. I am also working in the field of uh, biomonitoring using some selected species of sinkel that is one of the important species inhibiting in soil. And as well as I am always conducting the awareness program with the farmers, with the local farmers to encourage them don't use always the highly persistent pesticides, not the agrochemical. At present, I have an, an international collaboration with Professor Yuji Sakai, Tobago University, Tokyo, Japan, especially on soil bioremediation in India. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Partha Prathim, for respecting the time. Thank you very much. And uh, last, uh, Candidate will be Professor Ravi Naidu, who already gave us the talk early during this uh, webinar. Uh, Professor Ravi Naidu, would you like to present yourself and state the motivation for a position that you have applied within two minutes, please? Thank you. The floor is yours. 
I'm afraid you're muted, uh, Professor Nayidu, you're muted. Thank you very much, Sajis. I'm delighted um, to present um, to you about, about myself. Um, it's about 10.30 p.m. here, so I'll be a little bit slow. Um, first and foremost, uh, what I bring um, um, to, to INSOP is not just being a globally recognized scientist, but my ability to connect, bring together different groups of people, be able to collaborate, and in doing so, being able to diffuse um, science and training um, to, to researchers and environmental practitioners um, beyond um, where I'm working. It's just focusing on science I'm alone. Um, I've published more than 750 journal papers. I have been um, the highly cited researcher since 2020, Clarivet, but I also, but just recently, globalresearch.com has ranked me as the number one environmental scientist in Australia and ranked number 59 glo globally, and that brings my science to you. But uh, from from collaboration perspective, I have been very, very active, having worked for 30 years in this field, being a chair, commissioner, chair of Commission 3.5 International Union of Soil Congress on uh, Soil Affiliate uh, Amelioration um, 3.5 that I led for eight, eight, eight years. And when I first came to start working on, on, on contaminants in 1996, nobody believed that there was contamination issues. So I, I organized the very first uh, contaminants conference, Soil Contamination Australasia Pacific, and uh, led to a, that led to a network of soil contamination researchers in the Asia Pacific region and launched that in India as a node and st still the node if, of Indian soil contaminants um, research uh, over there. And, and the node of CRC care is now also in Malaysia that we are launching. And we have run, run, run workshops in a number of countries in the Asia region as well. But to do all of that, one has to be able to raise funds. And I have raised nearly $260 million in my career, not only for research, but also to train researchers and environmental practitioners from Southeast Asia. Pacific region. How did I manage to do that? Because I have been able to bring to Australia, to India, to China, to Indonesia, um, practitioners from all over the world. I didn't have to pay them, they came with me to help me do this work. So what I see now going forward is that one, for us to be able to make certain that we are able to train, to, to clean up the environment, prevent further contamination, we should be able to build capacity. That I think is a primary requisite. And unless we do that, particularly not in, in US or, or uh, in Europe, because there are many trained people, but in the regions like Africa, for instance, um, Latin America, for instance, and also Asia Pacific region. I'm very, very focused on that. And to do that, we need to build expertise from, from mm -hmm. Europe and also from, from USA. So what I'm bringing to this position, not just my capacity as a scientist who recognizes different soil types, who recognizes different contaminants. I've worked across inorganic and organic contaminants, but also the ability to connect and, be, and through connection, be able to raise funds as well to train train um, our researchers and also practitioners. So, so with that, I would also might like to just conclude by saying that I did work with FAO and we led the Southeast Asia Region Soil Pollution Report as well. I am a fellow of New Zealand Academy of Science, a foreign fellow of Indian Academy of Agricultural Science, and I'm also a fellow of Australian Academy of Science and um, Technology Engineering, along with fellows of a number of societies as well. So yes, Nayib, thank you very that. much. Yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting you, just time frame. No, I was concluding help. with that, yeah. Thank you very much, Professor Nayidu. Thank you very much to Dr. Hu and Dr. Pratim for your introduction and motivation. I hope that all participants are heard the background and motivation of all three candidates. And now we'd like to open the floor for elections for both chair and vice chair. So the first poll that you will see on the screens in one second will be the election of a chair. Please, once you see them, please vote for one of the candidates, Professor Ravi Naidu, Dr. Party Pratim Chakravati, or Dr. Dehu for a chair position.
Okay, we're more than 40% participants. Please uh, vote if you haven't voted yet. Okay, last 15 seconds to vote. Okay, um, Natalia, Isabel, we can end the poll and share the results. Well, Professor Ravina Idu, congratulations for uh, joining us and uh, becoming a chair of an INSOP, International Network and Soil Pollution. It's a pleasure. Uh, and I hope that we will collaborate and to make the difference and reduce and achieve zero pollution goal. Thank you very much, Professor Naidu. The next poll that will appear in your screen in a second will be the election of a vice Serge, chair. Serge, I think thing, since uh, we all also have three candidates okay. um, are yeah. the same candidates, I think we can consider the second candidate as That's the right. vice chair. That's right. So for the vice chair, if you can see the results, 24% has been voted for Dr. Dae Hu. So Dr. Dae Hu, my congratulations for uh, becoming a vice chair of an INSOP network uh, together with uh, the team, uh, Ravin, Professor Ravin Aidu and the entire uh, community on soil pollution. We're sure we're going to collaborate a lot and make the difference. Prof uh, Dr. Parde Pratim Chakravati, we thank you very much for your speech. Uh, for sharing your knowledge, thoughts, and I'm sure uh, you will be a valuable partner of INSOP Network and that your skills and knowledge will help us a lot to combat the soil pollution. Thank you very much for all participants and once more congratulations to Professor Naidu and Dr. Hu for uh, the uh, becoming part of the INSOP. And uh, well, that's it for this part of presentation. So that was nice and quick. Uh, we've discussed all pillars of areas of work that I would like to work on. We um, have the new uh, areas of uh, work that we will include into INSOP and that is soil and water relationship, as well as the food quality and food security and soil pollution, how that changes with increasing pollution on site. And we also have now our team established the chair and vice chair. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, the next part of our uh, agenda will be to discuss more tasks. I promised you Natalia in her presentation, she will go through different tasks that are um, allocated for different uh, areas of work that I've just discussed. And there we also have some um, polls and interaction for you to decide if you would like to see other um, tasks or activities to be included as part of the INSOP. So with that, Natalia, I give the floor to you and uh, you can share the screen. Thank you so much, Serge. Well, actually, I think since we are really late, uh, we can skip this also because we have learned a lot today from the different networks. We have now new ideas. We have a chair and a vice chair that are also very knowledgeable. So I'm sure we can discuss uh, internally on these, uh, these activities and the new areas of work of the International Network on Soil Pollution. And we will soon organize things specifically for all of the areas of work where we can discuss in more detail, more inter in interactively, the activities we really want to work on. So we will inform all of you, all the people that have joined the network, on the next meetings that we, we will organize in order to start working together to define priorities and define activities. So with this, I think we can move to the next item of the agenda and give the floor to the Glossoland chair to present uh, possible synergies between Glossoland and INSO. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Natalia. Indeed, I agree that it's already too late, especially in Australia for Professor Naidu and for the rest of the team. It's Friday evening coming. So, this is the first meeting, but definitely not the last. So we'll discuss those activities next time. So for surely uh, everybody can be informed. So with this, as I said, uh, Glossalan is one of the networks of GSP who, with whom we're going to collaborate very closely. Her chair, uh, Ms. Uh, Miriam Ostinelli, uh, will share her presentation and explain us what the Glossalan is all about and how we can collaborate together. So Ms. Miriam, uh, the floor is yours. 
Thank you. It's 10 minutes presentation. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, yes we can. can. Thanks. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, well, first of all, uh, it is a pleasure to attend this meeting and contribute to thinking about different possibilities to strengthen the work for the care of uh, our soils. Um, as uh, we discussed previously, uh, INSOP will focus on these four main areas of work to achieve the network's mission and goals. Um, in the framework of the first one, assessment of soil pollution, uh, which will focus on the harmonization of the standard operating procedures and reference values for soil contaminants is where we can uh, build the main cooperation between Glossoland and INSOP. Um, as uh, mentioned in the slide, Glossoland has more than 800 uh, registered labs around the world. Um, to better understand how we work, I have included this diagram showing uh, how uh, our network is organized at different levels, global, uh, regional, and national levels. Um, as you can see at the global level, we have the support of the steering committee, which provides uh, its support to define the priorities and action that uh, are going to be developed. Uh, and also to monitor uh, its evolution. We also have the support of a technical committee that takes care uh, of the technical aspects and that works in collaboration with the working groups. Uh, these working groups are the ones who carry out the harmonization of the protocols. Um, the technical committee also supports the trainers. Um, this global level structure uh, works in close communication with uh, Glossolan SPEC and with INFA. Um, in addition, it communicates with regional networks. Um, these uh, seven regional networks work uh, in communication, in coordination with the global level and at the same time, time uh, help organize and support the work of the national networks in each region. Uh, finally, at the base of the pyramid uh, are the labs that make up the national network. Uh, in each country, uh, we have uh, one reference laboratory, uh, which has the mission of forming the national network. These reference laboratories are the link between the regional and global level and the rest of the laboratories. Um, and uh, to understand how and why the cooperation between INSOP and Glossolan could be so, I would like to show very briefly uh, what we are doing. Uh, Glossolan was established uh, in 2017 to harmonize soil laboratories methods and data and to build the capacity of laboratories in soil analysis. Uh, one of the main activities is uh, harmonization of standard operating procedures. Uh, we have published uh, various SOPs on methods that uh, allow a general characterization of the soil, pH, electrical conductivity, different methods to analyze phosphorus, nitrogen, uh, organic carbon, uh, and at this time, we are working on other methods for physical and biological soil analysis. Uh, we have uh, also begun to work on soil contaminants. Uh, we are working on harmonization of the SOPs that uh, I mentioned there. Um, we have uh, also started uh, drafting some technical documents and collecting information on regulation for importing soil samples. 
this information is uh, incorporated into our database, uh, simple, and used, for example, when organizing meetings. Mm, there are all, uh, other areas in which uh, we are working hard to develop uh, the capacities of the laboratories in our network. For example, uh, in training, to provide uh, regular training to the labs on all those topics. Um, and in 2021, we have uh, 17 webinars given by uh, 26 trainers from uh, 16 different countries, as the, the slide said. Um, in addition to, to training uh, at Glossoland, we are working on organize, organizing uh, global and regional proficiency tests uh, to assess uh, SOP and also to help laboratories with uh, external quality control. Uh, but uh, as it says on the slide, uh, Glossoland has only a few experts on soil pollution. So uh, as done with other networks, INFA, uh, INSAS, Glossoland Spec, or NetSub, uh, we would like to initiate a collaboration with uh, INSOP. Um, the proposal is uh, establish a joint Glossoland INSOP working group. Um, the task could be uh, propose SOP for Glossoland to harmonize. Uh, considering the needs and priorities coming from the different regions, from the GSP or from SOP, uh, motivate laboratories to analyze soil contaminants to show in Glossoland, uh, prepare soil contamination awareness raising materials, as well as technical materials, uh, including uh, guidelines on the collection, storage, and transportation of soil samples, promote the establishment of uh, new laboratories, uh, get projects and procure equip, uh, equipment uh, to existing laboratories in need, uh, provide training on the analysis of soil contaminants and support and advise uh, laboratories as need, and develop of, uh, guidelines for the management and disposal of soil laboratory waste. Um, um, now, uh, to think about the cooperation between INSOP and Glossoland to develop SOP for soil contaminants, uh, I think we have to take uh, into account some aspects that uh, can facilitate cooperation uh, and others uh, that will surely have to be resolved. For example, um, as I said, many of the laboratories and people who work in Glossoland have experience in agricultural soils, um, although some uh, also have experience in polluted soil, uh, they are not the majority. Therefore, uh, the perspective of those uh, who are part of INSOP will be essential to define the methods to be harmonized. Um, we will also have to consider that the objectives of the analysis uh, may be different. Uh, this will lead us uh, to work with analytes of different types. And surely we would also need to work with different levels of this analyze. Um, so uh, as you can imagine, uh, all this inside uh, the procedures and the protocols. Um, therefore, uh, we must consider to handling and preparation of soil samples, the extraction, the cleaning of the sample, the working runs and limit of detection and quantification, as well as the equipment and material, the necessary control and the management of the laboratory. Um, well, uh, as I said, uh, we will have to consider all this, but uh, despite how young Glossolan is, uh, we have a great experience in this work. And I think that the synergy between uh, both networks will be very important. 
uh, because uh, we will contribute uh, our experience but uh, we'll also gain new knowledge and more experience by working with different matrices. And our lab uh, will be enriched by the expertise of uh, ESOP members. Um, so uh, in short, we are going to find difference in the work areas, but uh, we can start working on those aspects uh, that we have in common. Uh, and from there, uh, move forward uh, according to the needs and possibilities. Uh, finally, uh, how to work. Uh, I think uh, we should uh, establish a work schedule, assessing the main problems or threats that are identified, the parties interested uh, in the work, and the experience and analytical capabilities available. Um, discuss challenges and needs and explore financial resource mobilization opportunities. Um, and based on this information, define work uh, priorities and goals and define a specific work uh, agenda with uh, activities, dates responsible for each work and products. Thank you for your attention. Miriam, thank you very much for your presentation and explaining to us the, the work GlowSlan is working specifically the procedure and SOP, the interaction and our collaboration future, and sharing with us this map on National Solar Lab Network, which was quite impressive. Thank you very much. As was mentioned before uh, on mapping, uh, we're going to collaborate very closely with another GSP network called INSEE, which stands for International Network of Soil Information Institutes, and his chair. Mr. Uh, Luca Montanarella uh, will explain us more about the INSEE work and the future collaboration between the INSOP and INSEE. Mr. Luca Montanarella, the floor is yours, 10 minutes. Thank you. Yes, thanks a lot for the introduction. And I hope that you see my screen. I don't know. Yes, we can. Oh, great. So um, can you thank you for please. the invitation to join you in this meeting. Um, as you said, I'm here in my capacity as being the current chair of the International Network on Soil Information Institutions. And um, we'll briefly introduce to you um, uh, what, what we do and also um, how we can collaborate. I personally work at the European Commission, but in this case, I will talk only about what we do in this network. Uh, so uh, concerning um, the international, the, the, the topic of this very short presentation, it will be uh, looking to two things, essentially to how we approach the collection of global data about certain topics, in this case about soil pollution, and the second one, uh, maybe a few words about gaps and opportunities to map soil pollution. So the International Network of Soil Information Institutions is a, a network of the Global Soil Partnership, which puts together all the national institutions that provide soil data. And so um, uh, the main task is of this network is then to combine the national data sets into um, products, into global uh, representations of certain properties of soils or certain uh, soil conditions. Um, I take here just the latest example uh, to explain the process from the collection of uh, data about salt, salt affected soils. Um, uh, it's a process which is a two way process between the national institutions that provide data and the Global Soil Partnership Secretariat that is actually then uh, feeding the data into a global system. And on the other hand, complementing eventually the missing data from the national level with available other data at global scale or at regional scale. So it's a two-way process where the main actors are, of course, the national soil data providers that are represented within the network INSEE, and obviously the Global Soil Partnership Secretariat based in FAO in Rome, which is uh, doing the bulk of the work and is compiling the data then in, in, in these um, very prominently known uh, global soil maps of different properties, for example, uh, salt affected soils or soil erosion or soil carbon, and hopefully also in the future maybe about soil pollution. Now, if we talk about soil pollution, things I, I'm afraid will be a little bit more complicated than that. 
because uh, soil pollution, and probably has been already mentioned several times, is a more complex issue related to different human activities. Uh, main distinction, at least we in Europe do this, main distinction is between uh, local point pollution, so contaminated sites, and we know that there are plenty of heavily contaminated sites in Europe, but also in many parts of the world, and then the diffuse pollution process that is linked to many other uh, factors, atmospheric deposition, um, agricultural practices, all kind of uh, practices or human activities that cause diffuse soil pollution. So mapping then or collecting data about these two types of pollution is, in my view, one of the major future challenges of this new network. And honestly, I'm very, very keen to collaborate, especially with the new chair of the network, to uh, devise uh, together a strategy on how to compile harmonized and uh, policy relevant data across the various countries in the world on uh, pollution at local and at uh, uh, diffuse level. So uh, just to give an example, we in Europe collect, of course, uh, diffuse soil pollution data on many parameters, for example, on heavy metals, like in this case, um, but you can collect them on many other uh, important uh, parameters. Uh, doing this at global scale will be a challenge, but I'm sure we will get there as we did already for other um, parameters that we have already mapped. So thanks a lot for the invitation and I'm more than happy to contribute to the future work of this network and also uh, devise a strategy on how to collect uh, at global scale soil pollution data for, for future uh, uses. Thank you very much. Mr. Monterell, thank you very much for presentation, emphasizing your tasks and actually explaining the process of how to do this mapping. I'm sure that, yes, you said that um, the gaps and constraints that we're going to face in soil pollution are much more complex, but together, I'm sure we can find a solution. Thank you. And uh, last uh, presentation will be given by a uh, vice uh, chair of another network that we would like to collaborate closely, especially in the area of remediation. And that is the International Network on Soil Biodiversity, uh, which will help us a lot uh, in our fourth area of work. It will be given by um, Ms. Uh, Rosalina Gonzalez, a vice chair of the NETSOP. Uh, Rosalina, uh, the floor is yours. You have 10 minutes to explain what the NETSOP is doing and how we can collaborate together in the new network. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Could you hear me? Yes, very well, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the International Network of Soil Biodiversity, that is NETSOP. Uh, the idea is to collaborate with this network because uh, generally we see the effects of soil pollution into the soil biodiversity. So it's very important to work together. Uh, we launched the network last year on 3rd, December 3rd. Uh, we had 80, 800 participants from around the world. Uh, we define, we are defining key activities. Uh, we selected the vice chairs of different groups. I'm going to, to show you. And the idea is to provide critical mass for the implement, implementation and coordination of the Global Soil Biodiversity Observatory uh, to provide reliable evidence to support better decision making. This is uh, an important topic. Uh, we want to strengthen the knowledge about soil biodiversity because uh, as uh, we talked last year, uh, only a uh, few amount of soil biodiversity is known around the world. We want to contribute to the development of internationally accepted biological indicators because this is another challenge that we have. Uh, we want to monitoring of soil biodiversity status and loss. Uh, in addition, to increase the sustainable use of soil biodiversity and overall soil health and contributes to the adoption of good practices that enhance availability and safety thought. Uh, we have four technical working groups. And the first one is, is the measurement, is the working to measurement, assessment, and monitoring of soil biodiversity. The working group two is working on sustainable use and management and conservation of soil biodiversity. Number three is related to economics of soil biodiversity. That's very important for us. And 
number four is the policies and legal instruments related to soil biodiversity because uh, we found that in most of countries uh, we don't have regulation about soil biodiversity uh, we, we are working uh, in different areas one of this is the the promote the standard operation procedures to harmonize this the procedures to determine to analyze soil biodiversity lead the harmonization process in this area build the capacity of soil laboratories on soil biological analysis and raise the awareness of the importance of the determination of soil biological parameters in our network, we have um, really divided the men and women in, into the people that are interested in this area, it's very, and it's very interesting, as mostly and mostly from Europe, Asia, and Latin America. Uh, we have uh, our partners as a chair. We have Mr. Peter De Ruiter from University of from Wake. Meaning University of Netherlands. Uh, we have our coordinator that is uh, Rosa Cuevas. Rosa says uh, send an apology because she had a medical issue and she couldn't stay today, but she's our leader and we are working with her. We have from the working group number one as a vice chair, George Brown from Brazil and Carlos Guerra. Uh, as a vice chair from Germany, we have from working world two to Soy Lindo from Western University of Canada and vice chair uh, Jeff Batigeli from University of Alberta. From working group number three, we have uh, Gianluca Vagnara as the vice chair and Giulio Mar Malorgio, excuse, excuse us, I, I, I send an excuse if I don't pronounce, if I cannot pronounce very well. Um, by share from number group number four, my Rosalina Gonzalez, and Luca, my, my partner from the last presentation, as my vice chair. We have a special advisor from the NAWOL from the United States and Rosa Poch from the ITPS. Uh, we are now 910 members today, and uh, we are dividing in the first two groups, uh, more or less the 80% of people are working on them that are related to measurement, measurements and management uh, of soil biodiversity. And the more or less 20% uh, dividing into the number group number three, economics and policies number four. Uh, we have the, our link to, if you, uh, if you want, if you want to participate, in this group, uh, we will send the link to to join us. Uh, now, to, now we are working in addition uh, to development guidelines for measuring, assessment, and monitoring, development of field manual on soil biodiversity, development of methodology for the economic evaluation and performance and assessment of effective policies and legal instruments. So. We have other potential initiatives that include soil organisms, organisms in risk assessment approach and the toxicological studies. We want to work on the online database, um, best available techniques for managing and remedying polluted soils, include nature-based solution and develop national capacities and training, technology transfer for the sustainable regulation and management of polluted soils. So the idea is to work together. It's a great opportunity. And I think that is necessary to work with the important network. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rosalina, for this presentation and sharing your objectives, challenges that you're facing, as well as the possible synergies we're going to work together. It's going to be a mutual benefit for each other. We're going to reduce soil pollution, and that's all going to increase sustainability of soil biodiversity in the future by overcoming those challenges together. Thank you very much. Well, in that uh, sense, I would like to conclude this part of um, agenda presentations from all speakers. I'd like to thank to all speakers for sharing their thoughts, knowledge, and experience with the entire world, with all the attendees. Um, in that sense, um, happy to launch the new network of INSOP, and I'm sure we're going to overcome all the challenges in the future we're going to face. Um, the final remark I would like to give um, floor 
for a final um, closing sentence to our new chair, uh, Professor Ravina Idu, uh, as part of the agenda, uh, to give the final remarks on the INSOP and the, our vision. Thank you, Professor Naidu. Professor Naidu, you have to unmute your microphone so that we can hear you. Thank, thank you very much. Um, it's uh, 11 p.m. at this end here, and so I'll be short, uh, very brief. Um, at the outset, I would like to acknowledge um, the um, outstanding effort um, that FAO, particularly Natalia and the team, has put in place to get together all of us to launch INSOP. Uh, that, again, recognizes uh, the challenges that we are confronted with them from an environmental pollution perspective. Um, having been uh, elected as chair of uh, INSOP, I can assure you that uh, I will do my utmost to make certain that uh, environmental contamination pollution is no less than, than what we see as climate change. And that takes me to the, to the 2009 Nature publication in which they identified 10 planetary boundaries of which they said chemical pollution is one which is significant and nothing less than climate, climate change. And the difference is with climate change, there's infrastructure as there as they could be drought, for example, famine, things that we can see, whereas with contamination, we don't see things until such time you are struck really hard and then, and then it's a very painful death. And therefore, visibility of this is important. And the INSOP network that I have, I'll work with the network to make certain to, that we enhance visibility. Today in the presentation that we have had, we had in the presentation that it's a legacy that we must not leave for future generations. We heard in our presentation, it's not just soil, it's also about water and also air, and hence it is about criti critical zone. To deliver all of these things, merely by us getting together, would take us leave several steps forward, but we also need resources, resources to train, resources to build capacity. And that is something which I would like the team that I work with uh, to be able to do by connecting and connecting to see how we can raise resources such that we can train um, early career researchers also enhance environment, sustainability of the environment, what it means from food security perspective, from primary school to high school to the university. No matter what it takes, we got to do, we got to do that. So today's presentation has also brought uh, to me that there are quite a number of networks. The good networks, some of these are local and some of them go beyond being local. Nicole is one example, for example, it's also in Latin America. So the question is how can we bring the networks together? How can we do that such that we can collectively harvest the skill set that we have, expertise that we have, to take it to those countries that need the expertise. So with that, um, suggest and Natalia, I want to give my full commitment. And uh, we have, I see 439 participants, and I would like to work at, with each one of them in some form to see how we can leave our planet in a much cleaner state for a future generation. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Naidu. Once again, uh, thank you to all participants, attendees. It was a very fruitful and informative discussion over the past three years, of oh, past three hours, I'm sorry. I hope we all learned a lot about the extent of problems that we're facing in soil pollution and the challenges that we have to overcome. We don't have any other options, but just to address them and unite together all the networks and um, eliminate pollution as soon as possible, as long as it's not too late. Thank you very much, all the presentations. And uh, this uh, webinar was recorded, uh, so everything will be shared online very soon. If you have any questions, we do apologize that we still have some questions unanswered. Uh, if you have any other questions, please drop us an email to either myself and Natalia. Uh, all details are available at uh, INSO website, INSOFAO and we will address your questions uh, as soon as possible. So nothing will be unanswered. Thank you very much. If you have any uh, other remarks, um, please raise them now. Otherwise, I would like to wish you a very good weekend.
and uh, have a nice rest of the day and the evening. Thank you. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. And bye -bye. congratulations. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Professor Thank you to the organizer. Congratulations to the chairs. Thank you.